should be a lot better. Ooh, there you go. That should be working now. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so with that in mind, um, I, uh, so I guess I'll start over since there's no audio. But um, so today, right, I'm going to kind of start with some, uh, with some announcements, right? Um, we're we're kind of coming up at the end of the year right now. So uh, we have this week and next week for, um, uh, for, for some live stream sessions. I'm going to be wrapping up... Uh, uh, the the project that I'm doing right now, or not the whole project, but just this uh, this part, the uh, the buggy cart section, right? Um, so, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to take a break for Christmas, right? I don't want people picking between my stream or Christmas. You know, that's definitely not a uh, not not a <laughs> not a choice that you want to make. So, uh, we're going to be picking back up in January. Let me look at a calendar real quick. Uh, let's see, what's the first day of January? uh probably yeah january 9th right because january 2nd's a little close um to the uh to the st start of the new year so we'll kind of give people just a little bit extra time just to kind of you know get back in a um some sort of like working order essentially right so uh january 9th will be where we pick back up again right uh, but with that in mind we're gonna have a new format that we're gonna be uh, kind of messing with um, so, you know, if you, if you've been watching this and, uh, you know, it, it's been helpful you kind of want to participate, but you know, for, for us, we've been, we've been in this for about, you know, this is the seventh session right now, or we've been, been doing this for eight weeks at this point. It's kind of hard to just jump in, you know what I mean? And so what I want to do is I want to set up the idea that you can, uh, you know, jump in every month, right? We're going to have new topics every month. Um, they can tie together if you'd like, right? Uh, if the, the, the topics themselves are going to be completely up to you, uh, but we're going to kind of walk through uh, different ideas every week. I'm going to kind of show you something that ultimately ends up, you know, leading into what that month is about, right? Um, I'll talk more about topics and all that stuff later. Um, I'll have an announcement on it. Uh, if you are going to be uh, going to be participating, you will you will need to join my Discord for that. Um, you know, links are in the description. Check out my Instagram uh, bio as well. You can click there and you'll kind of see that. So we'll talk more about that as we uh, as we get a little bit closer. I'll have more formal amount announcements next week. Uh, but for now, you know, just kind of know that's coming. Um, if you, you you wanted to kind of work on some uh, some skills, you want to kind of get feedback on your work. Um, you know, next uh, next year we'll have a, a better kind of system, right? This this past eight weeks has been more of a trial run slash uh, just kind of, you know, ironing out the kinks before we kind of really start kind of pushing this to be, uh, you know, something a little bit bigger. So, uh, but for now, you know, we're we'd be uh, continuing as usual. Uh, we're going to jump into the uh, the crits first, and then uh, we'll go from there. So, uh, if you guys have any questions on that, uh, just let me know. Uh, we'll uh, I'll try to. Uh, I'll try to get to, um, you know, any, uh, any questions you guys have, uh, any suggestions or anything like that. So, uh, but yeah, just, um, yeah, just, uh, keep an eye out for that. So, but let's do this. Um, so, so, yeah, cool. All right. Riley, what we got, dude? Hey, I'm here. Yo, yo, yo. Um, yeah, so I just I attached that first the the ortho design sheets just so because that was the original design and we had talked about you know figuring it out, pulling the trigger and figuring it out from all the angles. So I just kind of uh, designed it um, in Blender uh, and yeah, I guess settled on this design here, um, just focusing on kind of trying to get that. I wanted the like the the head the main part to kind of have almost that like military helmet uh older a little older military feel in the sci-fi world and then like the scrapped propeller on the left that's kind of like uh diy'd on there and uh yeah should the, have the little mouth that can open up um because we're, I didn't uh, model any of the internal stuff yet, but I'm hoping that inside I'll have like kind of a place where you'd put like the energy canisters to like keep your drone charged up, uh, do any like maintenance. Cool. 
Dope, man. I mean, I think as a as a as a I guess an initial pass, right? It looks it looks great. I think you know, there's not really too much that I have uh, complaints about. I think for me now, it's just what do we do moving forward, right? So, with this in mind, um, I think what you have here looks pretty cool, right? Um, I would say probably the next step would be starting to figure out how all this kind of works, right? Because we had some we had some rough ideas here where it's like, you know, things are uh, we have some basic proportions and we have some general ideas kind of happening and so now when you bring this bring it into here it ideally it should kind of bring up a lot of questions you know what i mean like whenever i see this mm -hmm. the uh, the first things i usually think about is like well um how much of this is one single piece right because clearly you know like for example that uh that piece on the left here, right? That's that's clearly something else. That's from a uh, that's from a different drone, or you know, a rust, an older rusted drone, whatever it is. And you know, you can kind of see how that all kind of came together here, right? Uh, but now it's well, you know, how much of this is the original drone? Is it is it the rest of this is like one singular piece, or is the drone like inside of here? And I, you said it, um, you said it during your your kind of breakdown, but like. You know, it's like you had the kind of like older like helmet type of ideas. Like, what if it actually was a helmet that they just like carved out, and they just kind of put in like they, it's it's not originally some sort of like military drone. It's more like a service drone or something that normal people would have access to. But you know, they geared it out, they fixed some stuff, and now it's you know a little bit more bulletproof. Not like not that it's super bulletproof, but there's a little more sturdiness to it, and it can kind of do what they needed to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm yeah maybe make it even more patchwork like the uh lights the lights on the side and like the little speaker thing there could be uh a different material maybe and bring in some other things so that each more pieces look like they were kind of diy together as opposed to the, the original idea was maybe i was gonna have like a lot of damage on the left side so like the whole right side would be the original drone with the middle and then the um left side got like blown off yeah um, so that's why there's like the scrap piece but i do also like the idea of maybe more of it is uh patchworked together i guess it could go either way yeah you know like whenever you're designing this uh, something that could be kind of cool to see is that personality right like um the, because when you're describing this, right, this wasn't just some robot that is part of the, uh, I guess, part of the, the, the thing that you're doing, right? This is this is a partner. This is it's a character that happens to be a drone, right? And so whenever you think about, like, let's say, like a companion, like a dog, right? And then you know, there's this, this is kind of beat up dog. It's a stray that the main character found that he's just, you know, that basically they're just they're just keeping each other alive. It's not even like. It's not even like the guy, like, you know, is, is the dog's, I guess, I don't know, quote unquote parent. But it's like, you know, the dog is 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 just kind of around and he's doing his thing. And like maybe he has like a gimpy leg, right? Where like, you know, one of the legs is kind of like bandaged up. And, you, you know, you kind of feel for that dog, right? There's a there's an emotional attachment to that character, to that animal, right? And so whenever you're designing your your drone, Maybe you can think along those lines, right? Like, how do I make this something that is, um, I don't know, understandable, relatable, right? Um, in, uh, uh, God, what was it called? I just, I just thought of Shadow of the Colossus, right? When the, when the horse dies, right? It's not just a horse, right? It's not just some ride in that you just summon to like, you know, get around on. It's a partner. It's a, it's a character. And it, when, when the horse actually dies, it's you know spoiler alert for a 2000s game but you know the horse dies and you feel you feel for it it's a, it's a it's a terrible moment right and so with this how do you do that because just breaking things is not enough right you're you're you want to break the right pieces that kind of resemble a limb right because you know there's there's parts of it that are kind of like you know um if you if you were to break like you know this uh this handle part here probably wouldn't be as significant as if you like kind of duct tape that piece together. You know what I mean? Like it just feels different. Um, there's an association uh, with the different parts of this drone. So as you're designing further, you know, you can design things in so many different ways, but now it's how do I tell that story? You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe 
uh, aside from doing a little like breaking it, like you said, maybe there's some ways to uh, give it, yeah, give it like personality. Like, what if the main character, like, I don't know, like tied something on it that like adds kind of like a human character to it, so it's not just all drone. Like, what if it's like a necklace or yeah, I don't know, something, something like that as well might be cool. Yeah, right. Or even like, uh, you know, like one of those like "Hello, my name is" stickers, right? Where it's like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, be there's like there's character because there's two there's two parts of design, right? There's the function where it's like you know this th this joint needs to bend. There's these things that needs to kind of happen for this drone to look functional. But there's also the set dressing aspect. It's how do I make this feel personal? And uh, especially with props like, like this in particular, the way you described it from previous weeks, uh, we really want to make sure that this thing feels like a character, not just a prop. You want this to be with you, not just like, oh, when am I going to get a better drone? Do, do I come across a different one that is more functional? You know what I mean? Or is it like, no, this is the character that I'm with and he kind of gets upgrades as, as we kind of go, you know, like maybe like you take pieces of other drones that you shoot down during combat or whatever. And now you can like, you know, put, put a better sensor on him. You can do, you know what I mean? Like there's a, a whole like slew of things that, that are possible, but you want to, you want to kind of set up that canvas and help tell that story, but you have to know what that story is first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's, that would be fun, fun to explore some ideas for. Yeah. Dude, this looks sick, man. I, I like all this. It's, like, it's, it's nice because it feels functional where it's like, oh, yeah, there probably would be some sort of thruster back there. More like stabilizer type things, you know, fins and, um, you know, just, I guess, the drone propeller aspect. So I, I, I think this back view looks it's pretty successful because I like where, um, you know, whenever we see the different components, you know, the back end here, that's, you know, that's like pure function where it's like all this stuff kind of needs to be here, right? So kind of identify your areas of, of play, right? Where it's like, you know, bigger surface areas, you know, even the way you arrange things or things that are dangling off in like, you know, this area, right? Or uh, wherever, but you know, you can put like stickers and stuff. But the idea is try to find those moments and start kind of pushing that design further. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll have more, uh, more notes on, I guess, how we kind of go about this once I start my demo, but as you're designing, as you're going further, kind of kind of think about those ideas. Cool. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Awesome. Dope, dude. Yeah, yeah, just keep going. Um, the next steps, it'll be clear once I start my demo on kind of where I want you to go with this, because uh, you're, you're basically at the same step that I am right now. Uh, now just uh, whatever, I, I don't know, do you plan on modeling more or are you going straight to painting from here? Um, I, 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 I wasn't sure, I was thinking, about maybe still going back and addressing a couple things in the model, but I think F, I think I'm close to setting up some shots and putting it into Photoshop. So well, maybe a little more. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, just model what you need. Um, maybe even think about pieces that uh, are upgradable, like you know, uh, he gets like a, like a better weapon or a better sensor or whatever it is. Uh, think about those things and maybe those can be your. Uh, your different assets that you can like build for this uh for this character as you're going you know so nice awesome yeah great work dude was good thanks mm -hmm. all right <clears throat> matthias let's see here are the designs i went for for the poses on both scenes plus i'm figuring out a bit more the area in which these characters are battling for these designs, I use tribal architecture as big reference and shroom mycelium as medium reference. My idea is here is using ropes, intermingling with the structure, and feedback is appreciated. Cool. Dope, man. Yeah, these are sick. I think, uh, yeah, uh, well, let's, let's isolate this first. Let's look at the, uh, the buildings first. <clears throat> Dope. <laughs> what architecture were you using? Tribal architecture, okay. Okay, so, all right, whenever, um, I think as a, as a designs, as a, as a base level, right, they look pretty cool, right? Really, uh, really no complaints here in terms of like what I'm seeing, right? Uh, but what I'd like you to think about, right, just to kind of push this a bit further, usually when people build above ground, right, when you like, you know, uh, there's basically, it, it seems like the, the common language that you have here 
is that it's not touching the ground, right? There's a, uh, the idea is there is something wrong with the floor because if you would rather build a building off the ground than on the ground, right? It's fucking dangerous. You know what I mean? There's something wrong. There's it's like, clearly there's a reason for that. Like think like in, uh, well, you're not from Florida, but, um, in the Florida area, they get a lot of like, you know, tsunamis and, or I guess uh, hurricanes and stuff like that. And so like, you know, if you go towards the beaches, right, all the, uh, the beach houses, they're all on stilts, right? Because the water needs to come in then come back out. Theoretically, it's supposed to be better, right? Um, so, you know, why go through the effort of building a building like this if uh, there isn't any, I'm not saying there is anything, but I want you to think through that further because if you do think through that further, then that gives us, I guess, more information to kind of play with, right? Because tribal could mean anything, right? It's just a bunch of people that, you know, kind of live together in a smaller kind of group, usually more nature centric, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like a tribe could be basically anything from any culture. Because uh, most cultures have some sort of tribe to them, right? But now, uh, with that in mind, it's, well, how do you, um, you know, what, what culture are you using? And then, like, what are, they, what are they avoiding? You know what I mean? Because they built this high up. Maybe there's flooding, right? Because now, okay, there's flooding. So that tells me a couple things. Uh, maybe they're, um, you know, they're, they're trying to build higher and then it gives us a material because now it's like, well, if they're flooding, well, where, where are they? They're coastal, right? Uh, maybe they're like sea coastal versus like, you know, like swampy kind of waterlands, right? Um, so you could do that. And it's like, you know, you can kind of play with like the different ideas of like, you know, fish and seashells versus like alligators, swamps, mangroves, things like that. And that can tell you what kind of plants to use when designing out this place because, you know, with with a tribal, I guess, uh, group, they usually build with the resources that they have. And so in which case, you know, you see how like I'm kind of going down this, this trail of ideas, right? Just from a singular idea of, well, they're doing this for a reason, right? So with that in mind, um, I want you to, um, you know, you might have that kind of already started like working out. You might already kind of have an idea for that. Um, and maybe it's like, oh, there's like, you know, there's, there's like water here, you know, it's a swampy area and there's like crocodiles, right? And then you start seeing like crocodile skins, right? Like just kind of like, you know, uh, covering windows. Like they use it as a, uh, as a, like a, I don't want to say a curtain, but like, you know, it's like a, uh, a blind type of thing, right? Where it's like, it just covers, you know, protects them from sunlight and stuff like that, or awnings and stuff that are made from certain ideas, right? You kind of, create this culture based off of their uh their ideas because you know in real life it's just like that right we we you know if you think about egypt and you think about their structures right it's made of sand right it's a lot of these stones that are compressed and molded and made into these blocks right you know why did egyptians use that kind of uh, material it's because they it's all around them you know what i mean that's all they had same with like uh you know when you think about um i guess arctic regions with like igloos and stuff why did they build domes of ice right because they had a bunch of ice and snow around them right same idea and so whenever you're creating your culture here think through those steps and then you can start figuring out like well you know, they live here, so I need a house, okay? A house usually has some sort of patio type thing. There's outdoor seating in some sort of way. There's some sort of thing that blocks the sun. And then you can start using the materials that you have, right? But you need to know the reason that they do this and then the uh, the materials they have at their disposal, which usually means you need to be specific about that location. Cool? So as a design sense, I think there's really nothing wrong with it, right? I think... Um, I think they look good. There's nothing like, I don't, I don't really see any issues with it. Um, but that's the thing where it's like, well, it's not really hitting the tone of like, well, this is something, this is, you know, instead of like being designed for design sake, I want you to kind of tell me that story through the design. You know what I'm saying? Because you should be able to kind of understand what this building is for, why they do it and who lives here just by the materials and how they assemble it all, right? So cool all right let's look at your spirit creature now, that's dope see dude like you know like he's uh i'm imagining because this is this looks like the pose that you kind of had um i mean i know i know this is the pose but 
like this pose like kind of coming in and like you know like you're about to get rocked by this fist if you don't do something you know what i mean and that's what i'm talking about man such a good strong dynamic pose uh what i'd probably do is have this head because right now i mean i know he's i don't i know there's no face so he can't face anywhere but you know the the ellipse is pointing this way right but if you have it more central more dead on where he's like looking at you right like think about like um just try, how do you get that head to like he's like looking at you and then he's like because you know what i mean like he's 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 about to swing at you so you want to line up that face somehow and the face for you is just this ellipse you know how do i make this ellipse feel like it's pointing at me right how it's going it's coming this way it's looking at camera because when you look at camera, right, there's an intent. It feels like the, the audience is going to be, uh, is, is kind of involved in this. Because he's looking at you. He's looking at camera. And so with your shot, you know, we're, we're in the point of view of that other spirit. So we're in a fight, right? That kind of pulls us into the scene. So um, I think this, this stuff looks dope, man. Um, I'd love to see this and what this means. Maybe move it further, uh, further up. And maybe like having that design. Because right now he's like, pink flesh he's like kind of you know i don't say like that but like he's kind of orangey reddish and he's just like skin you know what i mean uh what if there are other things right uh if he's kind of it looks like he's heating up there's like a lava hand or something right maybe he's made of like this stone right or at least part of him he has like stone bits to him like the fists are just like kind of think like um if he's a uh, uh, like a boxer, right there, they have they have like a, a glove, right, and it, it goes up a certain distance. It's not just like the hand right there, and so things like that. What, what kind of warrior is he, right? He's he's obviously gonna punch you now. Great, that, that's good to it's good to see, it's good to experience that. But now it's well, you know, what kind of fighter is he? You know, you should be able to kind of feel that culture, and then using, you know, other design cues, you're, you're kind of bringing in that idea, just like I was saying here, where with the buildings, where it's like, there's an awning, so maybe you can use some of the creatures, or some of the, the foliage, or things around to, to create that same effect, right, it's the same thing here, how do I describe what kind of person this is, obviously it's a spirit, and I don't know how, pers I don't know how much character you're going to be including in this, um, I guess in this in this spirit, right? If it's going to be talking or be be interactable, other than fighting, right? But there is a level of like you should be kind of be able to tell what kind of warrior this is, or maybe there's even like gashes, or even like these lava cracks here. We're kind of seeing them, uh, kind of. It feels like it's coming up, right? But maybe it's originating from somewhere, right? Maybe it's like originating from here, right? Maybe the face area is kind of pitch black, like a volcano. And then like it just comes down like that, you know, and it creates some sort of interesting, cool pattern and it it, it, it trails down and creates a, a, a focal point. Kind of like if you think about Spider-Man, his webs all kind of meet up from from his body and it meets all the way up to the middle of his face. It kind of it kind of kind of comes in like that. So, you know, maybe you can kind of do think about doing the same thing or maybe even it originates from the fist and you kind of just see it spread out asymmetrically. Right. Whatever it is. Um, so just things to think about, right. As you're designing, uh, designing more, but you know, I like where you're going. I like this stuff that I'm seeing. I'd, I'd love to see more of that, you know, like that stuff right there. Just more like, um, you know, think about the kind of culture that you're referencing. There's warriors in most cultures in some sort of way. Right. And there's some sort of attire that they wear, right. When they go to battle, when they go to war, whatever it is. Um, so what is that, you know? If you can figure that out, it's going to give your character a little more identity, right? You can be like, oh, shit, that's a, that's a Mayan, you know, warrior. And there's like a specific thing and has a mask or, you know, whatever it is, whatever, whatever you want it to be. But that's the idea, right? So, but cool, man. I think uh, overall, this is looking sick. Just, uh, you know, just think about those notes as you're moving forward. Um, it really is just set dressing and kind of making, making things more relatable is, is, uh, is what we're looking for. After that, uh, start implementing this into a scene. So, yeah, great job, dude. <clears throat> all right cool guys um i think that's it let's see i think uh yeah let's see left your chat oh all right cool 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 oops hold up did i get that right let's uh let me 
grab. All right, so let's jump into what I did. <clears throat> so I was working on my project, right, uh, throughout this week, you know, just like normal. And let me show you kind of what I did and why I did it, right? So let's see. Uh, seven. Yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna show you on here just so we can kind of like see it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna click through it so you can kind of understand where I came from, right? Because, so from last week, right, it was a very basic model, right? Like this isn't by any means a great model. It's still, it's still like zero material, really nothing happening here, right? But you, I, I wanted to show you how from very basic shapes, just some simple manipulation techniques, uh, some simple adjustments, really all I used was mirror and solidify, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't even like subtract anything, you know, I didn't, I didn't even use any booleans or anything like that. It's just, like probably the easiest level of modeling that you can do, right? Um, that's, uh, that was, I would say like viable, right? I mean, you can just put in blocks, but you know, that's not what we're talking about. So with that, I spent a little bit extra time, probably like a uh, like couple more hours, right? Uh, it wasn't that same day, it was like later on in the week. Um, but I just kind of added a little bit more, right? Where I was like, cool, so from here, I made the headlights more sophisticated because I now I know, right? Because everything here is just a placeholder. I'm like, cool, I want headlights to be there. I want tires to be here. You know, I want the, the main kind of area to be like that, so on and so forth. And so I just kind of push things just a little bit further, grab some pieces, move things, add sophistication, do what I need to do to it, right? Even like included some of the Pokeball motifs, right? Uh, in some subtle ways and some not so subtle ways. Right, obviously that hubcap looking thing, right, is obvious pretty clearly, right? And then having like some sort of awning structure on there, because, you know, most cars in those safaris have like a kind of roof structure to it, uh, just because it's hot as hell. I don't know if you've ever been to those places. It's hot as hell, right? So, you know, you don't want to just be sitting in the sun. And then from here, right, just kind of adding a base material like base color materials you know if you haven't done it before all you're doing is grabbing the object applying a uh, material to it not even like a texture just deciding how how uh, metallic it is versus how uh, how shiny it is and what color right pretty simple stuff really not that different from what we have in our previous previous thing right i kind of added some things as we're kind of going right um and then from there Pretty simple, right? I just started pushing that further. I started making things more sophisticated. I started, you know, getting some of the pipes in there. I started kind of modeling things out. I made some lenses for the, uh, for the, uh, for the, 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 the headlights. And then I had the, you know, uh, the, the, the rear view mirrors and, you know, some more handles and stuff like that just to make it better. And then just slowly, you can kind of see things just slowly adding on to ultimately come to what I kind of have here. Right. And so this is realistically where I would end my modeling. Right. And, you know, maybe if you saw this from zero, it's probably like, oh, yeah, that looks like a very sophisticated model. But you saw this from or like if you, if you didn't see this at all, it'd be it'd be it feels, you know, like I might know what I'm doing. Right. But reality, it just came from this. Right. I just kept layering detail after detail and ultimately getting it to a better position. Right. Um, but just kind of showing you how from very basic ideas, very basic techniques, you can create something that is, you know, decently sophisticated. It's not perfect. It's not great. It's not amazing by any means, but it's close enough, right? It's good enough to kind of get me to where I'm going. So <clears throat> with that in mind, I have some, uh, I have a demo kind of uh, ready for you guys today. I'm going to be, you know, doing uh, my usual thing. But uh, first, let me show you what that is. All right. <clears throat> so. What I did was mm -hmm. I grabbed my original file or I, gra I grabbed my file and I just started moving things. I grouped the tires together. I grouped the uh, the suspension together, right? And then I, I kind of uh, just started moving things around in a more organic way. This, uh, this bottom plane here is just a, uh, here, I'll even show you the model. <clears throat> Let's see, should open up right now. Cool. Uh, let's not do that in cycles. All right. So, 
you know, looking at this, it's pretty, it's pretty simple, right? And all I did was just kind of include this, uh, this, I don't know, this landscape geometry. If you, uh, if you don't know how to do this, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, every stock blender comes with it. If you go to preferences and then just look up A&T. Uh, I should hold up, type in landscape, landscape. So, uh, add mesh, just check this box, add mesh, A&T landscape, right? And, um, once you do that and once you exit, you should have it in your, uh, your, um, your, your meshes, right? So if you go to add, right, mesh, and this could be down here, landscape under the, under the monkey thing, right? So you'll be able to make something like that. Um, and all I wanted to do is I want to show this off in its best light, right? If you didn't, if you don't ever learn anything during these, uh, these sessions, right? What I want you to know is do not show at least the first round, right? Not do not, but don't show it like this. You know what I mean? Like this looks okay. It looks fine, but it doesn't say anything. You know what I mean? And when, whenever we're interacting with clients, when we're, you know, interacting with our art directors or production designers or directors, whoever, right? When you make a model, when, when, they, when they see it for the first time, don't show them like this. Even though you have the model, if they ask for it, sure, you know, great. Just send them the, the standard, mm -hmm. like, you know, model T pose looking three quarter view, whatever, right? But what you want to do is you want to show them like what we have here, right? I'm showing this thing doing the thing that it's supposed to do, right? Like, you know, I, 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 I kind of like grabbed the wheel and I just kind of turned it, rotated it, brought it down, moved that suspension with it. It's even like broken. It's like doesn't even connect anymore. But, you know, in camera view, you don't even see that anymore, right? You kind of see it a little bit here, but we can fix that or we might not even need to, right? Um, or even like this, uh, this kind of uh, the head area here, the, the, the kind of roof area is like slanted. It's kind of like off kilter, right? Because I'm just imagining this thing kind of coming up, uh, cresting over this hill, right? And it's just like wobbling. And then because this thing is floating, right? I'm just imagining it's just kind of wobbling with it. And then these like, um, these are, um, these are train kind of, holders right uh you know if you've ever been in a uh, in a in a public train right they have those things that you can hold on to right this is uh so in, in japanese culture right in, in racing culture specifically which is weird um they put these on their cars which is really interesting um that they like they legit have it on like the back of their car or wherever basically where a handle wouldn't be uh, but I thought it was a cool touch and I just kind of included it as the uh, as like the kind of the bar that you kind of hold whenever you're sitting in a car, right? Um, still maintaining that 360 view, right? Where it's like if you're in this car, you can kind of see and anywhere, right? Like you can, you know, uh, and then with the assistance of like this roof where you, you can it can kind of move up and down with its functions, right? You still have a pretty clear view. That's why there's no... Um, there's no headrest on this thing that way if he needs to swivel around and look back there he still can pretty you know unencumbered right um even like tilting the suspension where it's like because the car like if you've actually seen cars going off road they can do that where their whole suspension just like tilts like by a lot and the reason i want to explain this and i'm putting so much emphasis on this is because we are always very tempted to show things like this and it's cool, right? It's like, oh, wow, that's a cool looking buggy or, you know, subjectively cool, right? Well, you know, whatever, whatever you think cool is, right? But it's just there in a white void, right? It's really nothing happening. And the issue with this is um, it doesn't really give us a story, right? Because the design here is basically it, it opens itself to be scrutinized, right? Because if you've ever been part of a design uh, brief or been, been part of like a design, like breakdown review, whatever, right? The look at it and be like, oh, yeah. So like, how does it drive? You know what I mean? Or like, what does it do? And you as the artist, you're like, I mean, it's obvious. It's like, dude, that's clearly an off-road car. It's like has big tires, like cool suspension. This, and, You know what I mean? Like it's, it's obvious, right? But not everybody always knows, right? You're not always interacting with, uh, with creatives, right? Sometimes you're just interacting with somebody that has money and they don't always get these things right off the bat, right? And then, you know, if they don't get it right off the bat, that's a whole other conversation of like, 
you know, how effective your design is, but you want to show them, give them the experience that, you know, like whenever you see, um, uh, like car commercials, it's always the car zooming around. If it's a fast car, they're always carving through the canyons, right? If it's like an off-road car, like a Jeep, they're always like cresting over some sort of hill. And then there's like the turnaround of the car, right? Because that's the order of importance. They want you to see the thing doing the thing because you're like, oh, yeah, I can see this thing like kind of cresting over the hill, like driving up a thing and it's just conquering this landscape easily, right? Um, but then it shows like, okay, cool. Here's the turnaround. Here's all the bells and whistles. Here's the, here's the straps. Here's the specs, right? Cause you know, you want to know that after the fact, but they sold it first, right? It's very tempting to, uh, design and design in 3d and just kind of leave it like T posed or just standard posed, but I'd push you you know, save it, save out a different version, right? Like I have this as another version, right? So right now I have this model right here, which is cool. I have the original model, right? In my original folder. And there's just another one where it's just stock standard. It's just flat. Cause I, I still need those views, right? And if you know anything about this, I, I basically kind of like put everything off center and, you know, it's really hard to really get orthos based off of this because it's not going to work anymore, right? But this is just like what I was talking about during the centipede uh, episode. I believe it was four or something like that, where I was talking about showing this in view, right? The reason I didn't design it as a TV right off the bat is because it's important to still see it in context. And because a model, you know, we're designing a specific prop, right? You still want to show it in context, but you have to make that context sometimes. Um, so Hopefully that was clear. I don't want to preach on that too much. Um, and, you know, and ultimately, right, some productions, they don't really care, right? If you're if you're only interacting with an art director, only interacting with uh, whatever, generally speaking, you'll probably be okay, right? They'll know kind of what they're looking at. But if you can just, you know, spoon feed them, just like give it, show them and give them an experience. That way they can look at it and have fun with it. In their mind, they're just thinking like, oh, wow, look at that. It's like, it's like doing a thing. And especially... If they resonate with it, if they're like, oh, yeah, I go off roading every weekend. You know what I mean? We do we do trails all the time and my car totally does that, you know, and then it's like it, it, it hits a chord with them and you're not just selling the uh, the the prop itself. You're selling the moment because this this design. Right. Ultimately, people don't really care that much about these little cut lines. They don't care about these little things that I did. Right. The door handle. Right. Is, is a familiar shape opposed you know compared to like the dash compared to the headlights right compared to all that they don't really care about that they care about the moment that they see the characters interacting or the adventure that you're going to have in this vehicle and you want to show that first and then we give them the turnaround right once they approve it right because when they approve it they're like oh shit that's dope i like the moment i like what's happening here overall i like it and then we'll kind of dial in all the details, right? Because most people, to be honest, in my experience, they don't care about cut lines. They don't care about little minor things. A lot of this stuff, they're, they're not going to look at it and be like, oh, wow, that looks totally not workable, right? And we can fix that for sure. But, you know, we're proportionally, it's like, is that kind of what you're looking for? You know, as long as it looks mechanical, right? We'll probably be okay. So, uh, long-winded way of saying show things in context, right? So that's what I'm doing here don't save that and um just to kind of like understand how i set this up um i took a couple i, I did a couple of renders right um right here so i have the ground plane separate i have the shadow separate i have the the uh the the buggy separate but i have the buggy separate in pieces as well right and that's the important part because i'm going to be painting this i'm going to be kind of you know doing stuff with it what i want to do is get myself to the same type of positioning that I would normally do it whenever I'm doing my own paintings, right? Um, if you remember the way I kind of like painted uh, all my uh, all my all my other stuff, I usually kind of separate piece by piece. It was like mountain, and then the centipede was another thing, clouds, so on and so forth. Um, and re really, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to set myself up for that because if you've ever painted before, right? Let's say you're somebody that is very experienced in painting right and you ever took on a, if you've ever taken a model and started painting on top it is hell if you've 
you've ever, if you've ever done it, it is nightmare. It's a nightmare. Uh, for whatever reason, you just feel like um, just incapable of painting anymore. You know what I mean? It's very odd because um, you're like, well, I'm normally able to do this, right? But the difference is the model kind of did some things for you in a different order and now you're not used to it, right? And so I don't like to just like, you know, because I have the full, the original renders right here where it's like flat, right? This is, this is what it looked like uh, before I chopped it up. Um, well, I mean, I just rendered it piece by piece and I did some other shenanigans that, that, that I'll explain in a second. But um, I don't like painting on this because now if I want to put atmosphere in between things, if I wanted to change colors of, you know, whatever, uh, it's not as effective, right? Because I, now I can't separate the green metals versus the, the grays or I can't separate the tires or I can't, you know what I mean? So a lot of things that I don't really like about just painting a flat layer, right? Some people can good on them. Uh, I personally don't because there's always revisions. So I always try to get my, get my paintings back to the same level that, uh, that they, I guess that I'm comfortable working in. Cause now it's, it's layered like I would normally paint, right? It just has a little more detail in it. Getting some questions. <clears throat> so Jesus says, and I think uh, this also applies when you want to show an architecture design, doesn't it? Like not only showing the building and maybe an orthographic view, but showing even a bit of the environment. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm assuming this is in uh, in in reference to uh, what I was saying a second ago about showing things in context, right? Because exactly, right? You never really want to show just a building, right? You, when you show the building, you want to show it as if someone's walking up the way you're experiencing it, but also like 10, 20 percent of that ground plane, right? Um, I have some, I have this artist here that I, I reference for like everybody. I think every student of mine that, that's taken like an entertainment design type level class kind of knows what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Let me sign in real quick to the art station that I don't use. <laughs> I haven't favorited here, that's why. So uh, I haven't liked. Do I have my likes? There it is. Where are you? Son of a, there it is. So it's this guy named Lock Do. If you don't know who he is, freaking dope. But um, you know, you're seeing the building, right? Which is great. The building looks beautiful, right? Uh, you know, you get both views, snow, uh, non-snow, right? Um, but it's cool because you see the building, and then you see like the property, you know, uh, directly adjacent to it, you know, uh, directly like next to whatever surrounds it trees steps and all that stuff and you want to show it because it's it's important right it, it it gives us context for the building it's not just like a building that stops because technically speaking the building stops like right here right if you look at this oops <clears throat> it stops right there at the the base of that wall right but you're missing so much context whenever you do that, right? You're missing the snow, the steps, the stones, all that stuff. And so um, basically when you try to design something, show it in context because not everybody has the imagination, unfortunately, well, I guess, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, to, to kind of imagine those things that you're talking about because something that you got to remember, right, for us as entertainment designers is we are the creatives, right? When you're in school, when you're in class, right, um, you know, you have the teacher, which is probably a creative of some sort, right? Especially if you're in doing concept art classes, right? They are concept artists as well. You have the other students, which generally speaking are pretty creative because that's all, that's everything that we're all trying to do. And then your whole bubble is probably creative because people hang out with other artists, blah, 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 so on and so forth, right? But... When you get into the workforce, it's not like that, right? Yes, there is an art team, but there's also a finance team. There's also a marketing team. There's also programmers. There's also, you know, just, you know, people like producers and directors and stuff. And some of those producers have no idea what any of this stuff is. They just, you know, they, 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 they make it happen because they produce things. They, they, they manage the schedule and they, you know, manage the team and stuff, but they don't do art, right? That's not their job. And so when you show art, you have to account for that because so many ideas that I felt like were, were strong, right? Got shot down because they're shown in the wrong context. And then we basically showed them again in the right context. 
and people just were like, oh, wow, that's amazing. You know what I mean? And it's it's a weird, funny thing, but just remember that. It's, it's something that's not always thought of, uh, but it is something that you need to think of, right? Because as creatives, our goal is uh, to get get uh get things greenlit right so all right i've experienced that at work yeah dude it's dude that's like every every day right it's it's stunning it, uh, <laughs> i'm i'm really having to figure out how i finish my work and present it because it, we've basically gone back to the drawing board because there was a lack of communication and they think that the style is too cartoony yeah. But we never did any pieces that present it in the right tone. Yes. Um, I've um, so. I've done pieces where uh, yeah, like what you're talking about where um, you I'm assuming obviously I don't work where you work and I don't I'm not privy to the NDA knowledge that you have, but in a similar experience where uh, I was kind of like in early development <clears throat> And then there's really no style established. So there's really nothing that I could do about that. But I would do something and they're like, oh, you know, it's it's too dark and gritty, you know. Um, and then we kind of like move from there. And then like, you know, five or six paintings later, weeks later, months later, we'd come back to that same painting I did before and be like, oh, yeah, can you just change that style? And then boom, it nails it. It just it hits it out of the park. And for whatever, it's like nothing's changed. Right. But you just showed it with the little things that they need to kind of piece it all together. Cause you can say like, oh, it's like this with a Hearthstone style or with a Call of Duty type of look or whatever, but not everyone's capable of seeing that, right? Because we're the creatives, not not them. They hired us for our professionalism, right? And so it's like hard to remember that sometimes, but you know, it is what it is, right? It's not their fault. It's just, you know, it's, uh, it's our job to communicate. And if your audience isn't understanding what you're saying, right, uh, that's your fault, not theirs, right? It's that uh, it's that common idea of like, you know, when you see a movie and it's just like it, the audience doesn't really react to it very well. They're like, oh, I, I, I didn't get it. You know what I mean? And there's this whole idea of like, you know, um, it's it, it kind of went over their heads. And there is a degree of that, right? There is a level of, like, yeah, I mean, maybe they should you know maybe it wasn't the right audience or whatever but a lot of times it really does come down to well maybe you're not hitting the right messages right because you can't control how they respond but you can control who you show it to and how you show it right and it's the same exact thing in concept art you have to make sure that your audience receives it well presentation the way you talk the things that you talk about you could even talk about something not even something that you're showing art wise you could say something that they're not even they're not even like they're like oh no no not not not, not like that we're not doing that and then and they'll shoot down your idea the biggest challenge yeah right that's, i can can you it has been so difficult to to learn how to navigate communicating ideas and i realize that's why our job even exists because you it is impossible communicate even through references or um of images because yeah. everyone latches on to something different yeah because like know, people some people will look at the tone some people will look at the design some people will look at the subject matter and you you can't say oh i want this sprinkled in 20 percent because they they simply will not visualize it all they think is that you want to use that reference as the thing yeah and it's like it's it, it makes communicating really difficult you just kind of have to to show it <laughs> yeah dude that happens with even with concept artists right where like um because i've i've been given like f feedback or or like me giving someone feedback or someone giving me feedback whichever um like i'll get a task and like hey we're looking for something where uh we're looking for something more more spider-verse uh related cool I know what that means to me, right? Because there's things as a, as a visual designer, as somebody that that paints, draws, and you know enjoys Spider Verse or whatever. There's things that I enjoy about it, right? And maybe that's the style. Maybe it's the render, the Alberto Mielgo look, right? There's a there's a painting quality there, that stylization that he does, right? Uh, but some people just kind of respond to, oh no, but I was talking about the animation style. I was talking about the way they they kind of animate on twos, right? We're like. 
but not not the visual looks you're like but you said spider-verse he's like yeah we're both talking about the same project but we're both taking different ideas from it and that happens so much where they're like you know you give someone a reference and you have to make sure that they understand what you're looking at right same reason right for everybody if you're following along with this project and you know you, if you create that week one reference board why i'm so particular about it where i'm like you know because everyone knows what they're doing right but that's not the point you have to be able to communicate that to others you know you need to show people what you're thinking because i'm you know we're not trying to teach you how to be a junior right if you want to be a junior artist all you got to be able to do is draw and paint simple as that right you have to be able to take this design and finish it off for me right if, if a senior artist says hey uh they're they're calling me on something else i have this design here can you add texture render it and do a turnaround of it right here you go right and you should be able to do that as a junior artist but how do we get past that right because you don't want to you don't want to train to be a junior that's not that's not like you know that's not where you want to stop you want to you want to progress higher than that right at least mid-level to senior and so usually what that means is it's your ability to think and communicate if you can get that down at a really high level bro you'll you will be so good right um there's there's a there's always like that idea of um oh well, like why is this why is this person like, you know, getting a promotion over me? Or why is this person like at this level, I'm only here, right? Like I can paint just as well or whatever, right? And, you know, the, those thoughts kind of sink in, right? And it's like, oh, why, why aren't I getting the recognition that I need, right? And it's usually, it's not your painting skills. It's your communication skills, right? It's how are you communicating your ideas, whether it's pitching your work or telling somebody else how to do theirs, right? Where it's like, you know, you're giving them feedback or even giving them an assignment, right? Because as a, as a, as a lead, you know, when, when, when I would give my artists a, an assignment, right? I have to be able to communicate the thoughts because I'm interacting with the client, right? Me and the client are on the same page. You know, they said something, I heard it and I know what they mean. And then the artist that's not in the room, right? That's on my team. I have to go to him or her and say, hey, this is what we were thinking and I have to communicate. It's like that game of telephone, right? Even just like rumors kind of get, you know, all messed up. But just imagine trying to convey a complex visual idea to somebody, right? And that's that communication level that really makes you a higher level artist versus somebody that can just draw. If you can draw and paint really well, congratulations, you're a junior artist, right? There is, you know, if you have an outrageous amount of skill uh, painting ability to you, yeah, you know, you'll probably get to like mid-level, senior-level artist, right? Pretty, pretty easily. But if you want to get past that, you got to work on that com communication. So, but <clears throat> long, really long, uh, long-winded way of just saying, you know, really understand that our job is to be able to communicate and you want to communicate the right ideas, right? A, a straight-on view, an ortho view is great for certain things, but showing it in context is more important, especially if they've never seen this before. And, you know, for, for today, technically speaking, you guys haven't seen this view up until when I showed it today, right? And showing it like this is the most effective way to go about it, right? I mean, you know, whether it's going to be the best painting or not, who really knows? But it has a little more character to it. It's doing something. And I'm going to make this, you know, better. So, all right. I think I had some more questions. Uh, Finn Down says, how, wait, how did you render the shadows separately? I didn't. Um, so I was saying I did some shenanigans earlier. Um, so this is the flat layer right here, right? <clears throat> and you see that shadow shape? All I did was just kind of levels that out. Oop. Actually, hold up. Uh, just levels it out. You know, I got that. Basically, I got that selection as close as I could. Something like that, right? I wanded it out. And then I pulled it from uh, the original here. So just copy and then boom, you have the shadow. Sh and then I just erased the uh, the, the rest of that buggy. Um, and then I just like toned it into a uh, into that tannish color to kind of match that shadow shadow side of the uh, the the kind of floor there. It's going to be sand, uh, right? But so you, you can kind of see how I lost a bunch of detail, but I'm not really worried about that. I'll, I'll fix that when I get to it. So it's really nothing nothing crazy. I, I, I do know there's a way, though. A friend of mine, he was like, he was saying that you could. 
we never got there in the conversation of how, but he said you could, so, you know. Um, boom. Yeah, if it does, you're right. As far as I'm aware, uh, uh, shadow catchers uh, weren't po- aren't possible. As far as I'm aware, I don't know. But, I mean, if it makes any difference, this was cycles, so I don't know. <laughs> Oh, have you heard about the uh, EXR IO file format? Yeah, um, I think you're talking about the the different like colored layers, right? So you can like separate into mass. You can definitely do that. Um, I, you know, you definitely could. I, I'm to be honest, I'm not that good at 3D, so I don't really do a lot of like the probably more standard tricks that uh, people generally do. Um, so that that could be my bad in terms of uh, just I, I guess uh, skill error, right? Uh, <laughs> but uh but yeah so i just kind of did it that way uh, it's usually pretty quick to, to kind of render things out like that um what i do like though is is that you get like i guess the full back view of something like if i if you you know if you do that color uh the 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 color select um method right for the masks and all that uh you don't get like what's behind the thing so if i wanted to kind of move some things right so if i had like let's say this back tire right i can like move that effectively well i guess not that one but this like this one right here i can probably move pretty well um or like this especially this back tire right here right i have the whole tire so i can you know i can move it and i can even like add to it if i wanted to make it wider or whatever and you can kind of get away with a little more so you know teach his own right uh let's see cool all right guys so with that in mind, long explanations, right? We're going to be painting this today, right? But just like usual, you know, there's a setup. There's an idea here. There's a there's a thing that I'm trying to achieve, right? So check this out. <clears throat> I have film frame from something. Um, I forgot what it was. Uh, it, was it was from Shot, shot Deck. And I just and I, and I wanted some sort of like nice sunsetty kind of mood, right? Because what we're what we're gonna be kind of moving into, if I can pull it up real quick, uh, this is a two. Let's see, four, no, is it five? Yeah, it's five. We're moving into this scene right here, right? Because it's the same project. So there's sand, right? And then if you look at this image here, there's sand, right? Pretty cool, huh? And so what I'm doing here is uh, I'm trying to make it make it make it feel like he's just kind of going through these dunes, and he eventually arrives at like the coastline or whatever. And um, you know, it's almost nighttime, right? It's like right when the sun kind of sets in this image here, right, where it's like it's still kind of bright outside, but it's like you know, pretty. It's dark. The sun's gone. The sun, but just left, right? And that's what I'm trying to hit with this tone here, where it's like. You know, the sun's starting to go down, but it's still in the sky in this case. It's still above the horizon line. And I'm going to kind of hit those color tones as it turn, it's turning like warmer, purpler, and then going into the blues. That way there's a nice transition from, you know, one thing to one, one painting to the next. And they feel related time-wise because the idea is he's driving around and then he comes across this thing and then he parks and he takes his picture or whatever, right? So that's where we're going with that. Cool. <clears throat> Let's do this. Sick. All right, guys. So with that in mind, uh, let's uh, we're we're good to kind of talk now. So, you know, basically like usual, right? I'm getting into my demo phase at this point. If there's anything that you guys want to talk about, I do. Ha I do have some topics I'd love to kind of um, bring up. Um, but I would like to kind of field some questions if you guys had any uh, from, you know, anybody watching or anybody like actively participating in the Discord right now. So if you guys have anything, just uh, just hit me up. I'm going to kind of start setting up this painting like I usually do. And then uh, I'll get into some, uh, I don't say heavier topics, but, you know, things that are, things that I feel that are, are important for for artists, especially right now during this time, uh, should probably know. You know what I mean? So. But if you haven't done a grid, do a grid. Never not do a grid, right? Because we're not, we're not savages. You know what I mean? All right. Boom. Dude. 
Dutch Horizon line? Bro, you know it. <clears throat> cool. So right now, for everybody, uh, I guess that's unfamiliar with this, right? What I'm doing is I'm trying to set up my set up this image to be, you know, hopefully something kind of interesting, kind of cool. Um, but the first steps, whenever you're setting this up, right, you can you can set this up with uh, like a, like the way your lighting is in, um, in in Blender, right? You can do that and make the lighting look good. But eventually, you do have to paint some to paint some stuff. I render things transparent. Uh, if you click on uh, here, I'll show you. <clears throat> I'll just pull it up real quick and we can, we can talk about it. Oh, this. So, oops. All right. Nope. Go this way. Go that way. All right. So I have this um, thing here, right? And then the trans, the, the, the background I set on transparent. So if you go to your, um, this printer looking thing. Nope, sorry. It's the camera, the camera back, right? Uh, it's right under the uh, right under the tools, right? It's the render properties, right? If you click down here, there's a film uh, drop down menu. Click transparent. It'll give you a transparent render um, for the the background. So anything that doesn't have like a model on it, anything that doesn't have any like you know, uh, I guess objects, right? It will give you a, a transparent thing, so you don't have to like lasso anything out. Um, oh, I did have a question. Uh, so I think Finn asked uh, how I set up my lighting. It's really simple. Um, I, it's not really that intense. Um, I just set a sun up top and I just kind of pointed it to where, uh, you know, it's it's going like it's it's backlit because I want this thing to be backlit. Right. And then I had another light here just to kind of give me some fill light. And then I had uh, two lights back here, which are giving me rim lights. If you look at camera. It's giving me a, a bit of a rim light behind the tire and then behind this uh, uh, this front tire right there just to kind of pop off some of that shape. And then uh, from there, I just have some headlight kind of glows just to kind of help things feel like they're, you know, glowing. Everything else is like an emission. So nothing nothing really crazy, but uh, pretty, I mean, pretty simple light setup. Nothing really that mind-blowing, so. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so with that in mind, um, whenever you're starting, right, I'm just color picking from this reference. I'm just trying to get something that's like remotely close to what I want. This way, uh, whenever I start, you know, painting, start adjusting my uh, my image, I already have a reference point, right? Because if, you, if you've ever started painting before, like, and you just started like painting the thing, like whatever whatever thing that you have, you know, I guess ready to paint right in this case it'd be the buggy if you ever start painting that and you don't set up your scene around it right you really won't know what colors you need to pick or where things need to go um so i, re I really do find it helpful to kind of start with that background first and kind of work in that way i have a comparison point because if you ever like painted something like this and then you like get to the background like your background doesn't have enough contrast or there's not enough like push or you can't go brighter or darker or whatever um, you oftentimes, oftentimes have to like, you know, make a bunch of adjustments. You have to go back and adjust the whole vehicle again or whatever it is. Right. So I try to, uh, just set up that background first and then yeah, go from there. Let's see. All right. So a lot of talking this morning or this, 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 this time around, just, uh, a lot of, a lot of things we gotta, we gotta preface first. <laughs> Let's see, boom, something like that. I just need like something, right? Uh, we'll fix all this in a second. I just need something that like, you know, roughly feels like uh, what it's supposed to be. So let's get some cloud in here. go with a darker color there you go if you guys aren't using cloud brushes come on come on this is it just does the work for you i mean 
If you look at a lot of my paintings in the last couple of years, you'll see this cloud. This cloud in particular. I, I, I have a new cloud since then. I have uh, a new, <laughs> a new, uh, a new uh, brush that I've been using for the past like year ish. But uh, this cloud in particular has been really nice. It helped me through a, l a lot of tough paintings. It's nice too because like just adding some perspective to it, it makes it feel like it's going. There's a, it's dimensional. You know, it feels like it's going in space. So really useful for stuff like that. Boom! Sick. All right. Oops, where's my Hey, no questions, guys. <clears throat> I'll get in. I'll get into my stuff in a second if you guys don't have anything to talk about. But just wanna just wanna give you guys a chance. I could talk. I could talk forever. But let's see. Boom. there you go. Sick. So I want to have um. I want to have the sun kind of like peeking through some clouds right in that back section behind the vehicle. That way I get a nice rim light. Uh, I can get a nice bloom to kind of make it feel like it's, uh, there's a lot of atmosphere and like, you know, color bleed and all that stuff. And then we'll work on that foreground and make it look uh, nice and dandy, right? So, <clears throat> okay, where are we at here? Let's see, let's do that. Let's rasterize this. Ramik says, uh, Ramik says, am I a, tea person or a coffee person i'm a coffee person i uh i should probably chill out on the coffee uh, just because i have um i make like cold brews every day and i have an espresso machine that i uh i probably use too much i should probably i should probably chill out on that uh but you know it's good it's uh it's nice you know it's um i don't have to spend uh what eight bucks for for cup of trash at uh, coffee places now so that's cool but uh but yeah i do have uh, i do have a, a coffee machine or a espresso machine and then i make cold brews and stuff so i do drink tea as well though i mean i not that i not that i don't drink tea or anything like that it's just uh i mean i would definitely say coffee how about you man what do you drink Finn, uh, Finn asks, if you have to make changes to this design, would you go back to modeling stage or just uh, paint over it in Photoshop? Uh, it depends, right? I mean, it depends on like what uh, what changes you're talking about. If it's like, hey, um, you know, we don't really like the body shape. Yeah, I'd just go back, right? Because there's not there's not enough there's not enough painting that would probably fix that, or there's too much there's too much to change, right? Um, because I can just in the modeling side, I can just you know just take the uh, take the body, remove it, still have the wheels, still has the suspension, the headlights, and all that stuff, and just change that body shape. Um, so it's pretty simple, right? Um, but in painting, you know, if there's like oh, you know, the the way this connects, or there's some textures, or even the color is not even that big a deal. Uh, I can do all that here, and then you know, once I because the idea would be. You do this painting and it gets, you know, it's sold, right? It, it, sell, it sells itself to the, uh, the, the client or your director or whoever, right? And they're like, oh, shit, yeah, that's what we want. Cool. And so from here, right, you'd have to do the turnaround. You'd have to do the thing. So if it's like minor changes, like colors, little joint fixes and stuff like that, um, I would usually do it here first, get it approved, and then when I do my turnaround, just fix it, right? Um Versus like having to, I guess right where it's at right now, I would just do the change of modeling because there's nothing to be done here. After this week, it will it will have been painted, it will have been adjusted, and all so on and so forth. So it just kind of depends how much painting I have to do or how much uh, edits I need, right? So a very like you know maybe type of answer, uh, but it really just depends on what you're doing, right? Um, if it's if it's a quick fix. Uh, more often than not, I'll, I'll just fix it in uh, fix it in paint, just because 
it's it's fa usually faster that way where it's like oh yeah i just need to adjust a couple things or you throw in a photo you do what you need to do to make that look good right so Actually, that's too dark fosco is 50 50 tea and coffee that's crazy dude it's uh i don't know dude People that people that are fifty fifty, I just I just can't trust you, man. I just uh, just you don't you don't make decisions, dude. It's, you're 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 one team with the next. We can't be that can't be that uh, that parent. It's like I like both of my kids equally. <laughs> so that's cool, dude. All right. So. I'm just, I'm just starting to kind of get my, uh, uh, just my, my scene looking okay. I'm actually kind of having trouble with, uh, where this, um, uh, this foreground plane is right in terms of like how dark it needs to be, because I know how dark my background is, right. Which is fine. And I'm wondering like, do, does my foreground need to be, you know, dark like that? Because, you know, if I, for example, right now, What's, what's happening is I have this um, I have this cast shadow plane right or cast shadow, which I, I kind of want to have. I'm not quite sure yet, um, and I feel like the ground plane needs to be that bright, right? Because if it's not right, because I added in this cast shadow, if I darken it to where I would think it needs to be, right, something like that, because you know graphically speaking, right, uh, it's going to be a little bit darker in that foreground than the background. The contrast for the, um, I guess for the uh, the cast shadow, it doesn't work as well, right? Cause it's like not as strong. So still trying to figure that out. Maybe I can do a little bit of both. Let's do that real quick. Oops. That's not bad. That's not bad, right? We'll figure it out. We'll, uh, we'll we'll do this, and then hopefully we'll get it to a good point to where it's like, oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, because I need that contrast. I need that. Uh, I need that light hitting that plane because I want that cast shadow to kind of be raking in pretty pretty well. Um, but it can't. You know what I mean? I'm trying not to have it like. You know, I still want that cast shadow to be there. Is all I'm trying to say. Fosco says, um, when I feel I have too much caffeine in my blood, I just switch to tea. That's your issue, dude. You feel that you have too much caffeine in your system. I didn't think there could be. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, that definitely, no I, I totally agree. I do, I do have to stop myself. I do feel like uh, it was at one point I was drinking a lot of coffee. I was probably like two cups a day at one point. And I was like, you know, when you get headaches because you don't have enough caffeine that day or whatever. I was like, okay, I got to chill out. You know what I mean? Because like, I mean, you know, plenty of people will have it and they just, you know, they're cool. You know, I'll do one, one cup a day. And I was like, you know what, man? Um, I don't think withdrawals are a good idea. Uh, it's, I mean, you know, regardless of what it is, right? Um, so I, I try to like, I try to cut back for sure. Um, I usually have a one one cup a day, whether it's like a, you know, cold brew or whether it's a uh, a latte or something or a cappuccino, right? So I feel like I'm in I'm in control, right? I can I can quit whenever I want, right? Is that is that what they say? Is that did I say that right? But I don't need to, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? When I start, you know, taking out loans to buy coffee, you know, that's that's when you guys need to stop me. If I ever say that during stream or something, I'm just like, but uh, I think I missed something. Uh, Ian says, uh, "What percentage does the model provide? Uh, model provide before you decide to start the paint over?" So um, that varies, right? Uh, I mean, just like any other <laughs> answer that I have, it varies. The reason for that is because, um, you know. I'll sometimes I'll take models to this level here, right? Where it's like, that's, that's pretty far, I would say. Um, and then there's other times where I'll only take it this far, 
right? Where it's like the the, the phase that we had last week, right? Um, you know, it really it really depends on what I'm looking for. If I need something quick, right? Because the the focus is the buggy. The point of the design is the buggy. Um, you know, I took it a bit further, right? I mean, quite a bit further, right? Just comparatively. Um, but you know, if I'm doing like a city scene, I need a bunch of cars. Yeah, no, they're getting, they're, they're not even going to get close to this. It'll be a cube, if anything, right? It just depends on what that focus is. Um, or if I'm in a hurry, right? Uh, this, you know, usually for, for live stream stuff, right? I'll spend probably about one more day on this, right? Because that's usually what I have for work, right? Because the difference, you know, live stream versus work, right? Where live stream, we're doing every seven days. So I, w I won't see you for another seven days, essentially. Uh, but at work, it's the next day. It's eight hours later, right? Or, you know, next day and then plus eight hours. And so, you know, um, I might take things this far. It just depends. Um, but the thing about this is you don't want to commit too much to it because there's a lot of modeling that I did here where it's like a lot of details. I was kind of figuring things out. I was just messing around. And ultimately, just kind of came up with a design that I, that I liked, right? But... This could have been approved probably at this stage, right? So I had this here. That, that's that's probably too far away. That's too simple. And then like this stage right here is probably a stage that you would be able to get approved on, right? Because you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Let's move forward with that. Let's continue. Because I don't want to spend, you know, hours, days trying to figure out a design and then ultimately get it shot down, right? And then if once this is approved, like, cool, let's... Let's, you know, fully realize this thing and make it look a lot better and just, you know, just more detailed. Even here, it's still like 70, 80 percent, right? So revise what percentage of design slash illustration does the model provide before you start your paint over? Um, I mean, it could like right now, like this is this is actually pretty far. Like I, I would basically do a weathering pass slash compositing pass on this. Um, but very rarely will I have a model like this far. Um, I don't think I've ever painted with something this far along. Um, maybe something that was kind of close, but not, you know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't, uh, not, not too much, uh, not too much, like, I guess before this, but you know, uh, there's a lot of smaller details that I really wouldn't care about. Cause like, I think I showed it, um, during like the, uh, the centipede part where I took a bunch of pieces and I started like multiplying the detail on itself. I just took pieces and started bashing it in and started figuring all that out. Um, I would do the same thing here, right? I would take that same suspension, shrink it down, throw it in, shrink it down, throw it in um, and do it in strategic parts. And it starts looking very sophisticated, maybe even throwing like uh, photos and stuff in, in place to make it better. Right. So um, it, you know, I guess there's really no answer because it does de it does depend on what, what, what I'm doing. But at the end of the day, um, you know, it really doesn't I, I usually don't take things that far before I start painting because the painting is what matters the most. Right. The scene, the moment, because, uh, you know, they can kind of fill in the rest in terms of like what uh, what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? So, hope that helps. Wasn't a very clear answer, but uh, I never I never get clear answers. Right. <laughs> All right. So, all right. Um, I did want to talk about some stuff. I think um, I had a, I had some, I was having a conversation with, with a friend. <clears throat> I've had, to be honest, I had a couple conversations with, uh, with a couple different people this, uh, this week, actually, uh, weirdly enough about um, just like finding a job, you know, um, just, you know, right, right now, for those that don't know, um, the industry is a little, a little weird, right? To say the least. <laughs> It's not in the best place it's ever been. Let's just say that. And so with that in mind, right, uh, job hunting has been a little hard. Um, I think like it's difficult because there's a lot, there's a lot like it, it gets very personal. You know what I mean? Like it's very like um, it gets very like, I don't know, it, it, it could feel like you, you're not good enough, right? Even, even like working professionals. I'm not even talking about like students. I'm talking about like working professionals with like, you know, almost a decade of experience behind their belt. Just like looking for work, trying, trying to figure things out because it's hard as hell, right? Um, and for those of you that, you know, like, oh yeah, you know, they would never have trouble finding work or this and that, right? Uh, trust me, uh, everybody struggles with this just because um, 
it's hard as hell. It's it's not easy uh, finding work uh, in this industry as a whole and uh, for for any level, right? Because even though like yeah, they're they're better, they're you know they they have experience this and that. Um, the thing that really happens is well, they're aiming for higher roles, and you know there's um, there's so many roles at the bottom, right? There's you know for every team there's a couple different artists right usually the lower level artists is like three or four of them and then it you know i don't say pyramids up but <laughs> but it like you know goes into one singular person at the top right your art director your creative directors whoever um not not even that like that they're at the top but you know there's less of them right you always have more concept artists than you have leads right it's usually how that works it's supposed to work that way um and so People would be like, oh, yeah, this person always is, this person has a ton of experience, right? They they wouldn't have trouble finding work, right? Why would they, right? Um, but, you know, the reality is it's hard for everybody right now. And I think um, so, something I wanted to talk about was just the, I guess, the understanding of like, I don't know, what um, what that means. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I don't have any like real answers or anything. But it's something I do want to talk about for those that are trying to find work is really like understanding I guess the job search, right? There's, there's this idea that it's like, because I, I get this, I get this uh, question a lot. It's like, Oh, you know, or not question, but this statement where I'm like, Oh, I have, you know, a, a finite amount of resources. Um, you know, cause I, you know, I'm not loaded or whatever. Right. I can't afford to go to school forever. Right. So I, I have six months until I need to find a job right before, I, before I have to quit this, this industry right? That's usually what it is. And what I always tell my students, right? You know, if you're, if you're having trouble financially and you're looking to, to get work, um, don't put a deadline on yourself, right? Cause it's so difficult. It is so difficult to find work, um, for anybody that, you know, putting on that pressure for yourself to like find a job as soon as you can really doesn't help, right? Because what ha usually what happens from what I've seen, because especially as a, as, a, as a teacher, I get this a lot in my classes, right? And I wanted to talk about this because um, just understanding that it's something that happens to a lot of people where they're like, well, I teach world building too. So, so I see this a lot where like, well, you know, I only have six months so I need to, you know, I, I want to work on some skill building now and then uh, start doing a portfolio in about three months. That way, by six months, I can like show something. Right. Um, and so they'll skip world building one or the skip perspective and they'll go straight to my class. Who's like, well, that's the painting class because because I, I need to do that. And, you know, what sucks is. Like, cause obviously they're, they're not in my class yet, right? Until they, until they sign up for it. And I don't, obviously I don't know until we do some assignments, but basically it's already too late by the time I realize it, right? Because the issue is now, instead of like when you're taking my class, you know, you're only picking up 10, 20% versus like, let's say like 60, 70% if you are like on track. Cause usually what's going to happen is I'm going to tell you like, Okay, cool. You know, I'm, I understand you have a deadline, but uh, you probably want to go back to World Winning One. So now you spent two and a half months in my class. Now you got to go back to World Winning One and then spend two and a half months in that class and then come back to my class. So you spent triple the amount of money when in reality, you know, just doing it in order, even though it's supposed to take longer, right? Because you, you're having to go through every class. It, um, you know, it, 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 it slows you down by so much because now you have to repeat steps, right? And um, I just wanted to talk about this this process because there's so many different aspects to this, right? And I understand it, it is, there's perfectly good explanations for all of it. People don't do this like willingly, right? They're like, I just I just have to, right? Um, but you know, when whenever you whenever you first start, I'm starting with students, and then we'll get into like some professional stuff as well. Where whenever whenever I, I see that. I'm like, you know, whatever time limit you have, find any possible way to extend it, right? Because it's like, oh, I only have six months, right? Or a year, you know, two years sometimes. And like, if I don't, then then concept art is not for me. And, and what I would say to that is just don't, try not to do that. Just because it puts so much pressure on you. 
And it really makes things hard to, I guess, I don't know. It, it makes makes it hard to really sit down and learn because every everything that you're doing, right? You're, you're kind of coming at it with, through the scope of like, oh, I need a portfolio piece, right? Because I need to show something by the end of this. And so you can't really do just, I say like exercises anymore, right? You can't just do one-off assignments because every painting you have to do needs to be a portfolio piece, which ends up being this this whole other thing. You know what I mean? Like it's, um, it just becomes this, um, the snowball effect. And more often than not, from the people that I've seen, um, you know, more people, the, the, the more people that like, I guess, just kind of skip things, the more you have to go back and actually ends up taking longer. Um, and it's, it's, it's heartbreaking because it's like, you know, it's, I understand why you do it. I'm not, I'm not blaming you, but it is something where you kind of have to like understand that it really is a, 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 uh, an industry of skill. If you don't have the skill to do it, it, you won't get hired regardless. It doesn't matter what your timeline is or it doesn't matter to them what your timeline is. It matters that you have the skills necessary. And so for a lot of students, it's, you know, I, I can't, um, I can't slow down to do this thing because I, uh, I have a deadline to do right. Even <clears throat> people in the, uh, in the, the discord chatter are, are saying that, you know, it's happening to them as well. And, you know, it's, it, it, it sucks. Right. And I, I, and I totally understand that. Um, so, you know, just things to think about. I, I, I'm not really trying to get anywhere with this, but what, what I do want to point out is um, the fastest way to kind of find work, right, is to cover every skill and, and get every skill you need to kind of get to where you're going, right? Uh, because oftentimes, if you kind of check off every box and do what you need to do to kind of get, uh, like, you know, you're, you're, you're very specific about where you want to go, you're, you're finding the skills that you need to kind of get there, uh, more often than not, you'll you'll at the very least be you you're, you'll start being qualified for uh, various roles, right? But if you're missing a lot of skills, if you if you're lacking in drawing fundamentals, right? And this even with people that I've worked with, where like you know their drawing fundamentals were just just weren't there, right? Just because they skipped it, they they started photo bashing, they started doing all these things early. I guess photo bash because this, this is when I was in school, so photo bashing was the bigger thing at the time. Um, and then modeling started kicking in, but you know, uh, they were like, Oh, I don't need a paint if I can just photo bash. Right. And then, you know, obviously you know, it just bites you in the ass, right? It just, it haunts you for the rest of your career. Every time you need to like paint something, you know, it just doesn't work. Same with like a lot of the, mo a lot of modelers that I've been seeing not modelers like concept artists. I've been seeing lately where they're like, oh yeah, why do I need to learn how to draw, right? I can just paint, right? Or and, uh, why do I need to learn how to draw? I can just model it out. Yeah, you could. Technically speaking, you 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 might be okay, right, for a little while, but eventually you have to touch this thing. You have to get to the point to where, you know, you got to do something to it, whether it's atmosphere, whether it's uh, revisions, whatever, right? There's something that you have to do. And if you are, I guess... Um, if you are unable to adjust it effectively, then it gets really hard to do your job, right? And, you know, a lot of these classes and stuff, um, you know, prepare you for that, right? It might not seem like it right off the bat, um, but it is something that uh, can really go a long way if you slow down and learn what you need to learn, right? <clears throat> cool. All right. So not really go anywhere with that, right? But what I I, I kind of want to talk about like some some journey things, right? Because as as a, as a teacher, I see that a lot. As a as a as a professional, like I see that with like it's a, you know I'll get emails or I'll get students asking things and stuff like that, and it sucks because I'm like because I've had like I even had like like family members come up to me that that want to do this. And they're like, oh, I just graduated and I'm doing a thing and I, I, I want to work in animation. I'm like, oh, cool. Let me, let me see your portfolio. And so whenever we see it, I'm like, ah, oh, shit. You know what I mean? Like they maybe went to like a normal university where they had, a, they happen to have an art program there or whatever. And that art program just, I don't say it like this, but just stole their money. You know what I mean? Like it's just, 
um, it's unfortunate because they're, they're not trained in what we do. They're trained in something, but they're not trained in entertainment design specifically, right? And that's the unfortunate part where, you know, because, you know, I have to tell them like, oh, hey, you know, like you're four years away still, unfortunately, you know, and that's that's a tough thing to hear, especially if you're like, hey, I need a job like now because I just finished school and I got some student loans to pay off, whatever it is. And so, you know, understanding that, understanding, like starting to, I guess for, for me, what I, what I want people to know that as we're, as I'm going through these streams and stuff, right, it's, it's this type of knowledge that a lot, I, I guess you don't really hear about, right? It's, it's hard to just hear this in the middle of a class. So I, I would say, you know, it's, just, it's not something that I guess, um, is, is, is talked about too much, but it, it happens so much and it happens to all of us, right? I think the unfortunate part is, Every single one of us is, is experiencing this to some degree from, from beginner levels, right? From what I was talking about, even at professional levels where like just trying to find work because the shitty thing, right? When you're a student, skill is usually a factor where like when you're trying to find work, it's like, hey, um, sometimes you're just actually not qualified, which is unfortunate, right? And hopefully you'll get there, but there is a level of like, you just aren't at that level yet, right? But when you get to the professional level, right? You're like, oh, I've worked before. Okay, cool. So I should be able to just kind of swoop in, you know, just wherever I apply, right? It's like, I'll apply somewhere. I should, you know, expect a call back at the very least, right? You would think so, right? Because it's like, oh, I have, I have this experience under me and I have these it's these credentials, I have these titles, right? Um, but unfortunately, from from what I've seen, from a lot of a lot of like my friends and a lot of like uh, people that I've interacted with, even even like past students that uh, that are on like their second job type of thing, right? It's really hard to find a job, regardless of what skill you're at, right? Because you have to like you know, I guess convince these places that you are qualified to work there, right? It's like you have to you have to convince them that you know you're you you have what they need. I, I've even gotten a uh, um, a crit critique on on my uh, I don't say a critique, but just feedback on on like why or what what I was doing. I even got a thing saying like, "Oh, you're like overqualified for this." I'm like, what "Does that even mean? You know what I mean? If, is, am I qualified or not? You know what I mean? Like, can I if I if I can do it?" then that means I can extra do it, right? Because I'm overqualified, I can overdo it. So why is that a bad thing? And, you know, it is what it is, but it happens where like professionals even have a hard time finding work. And when you're a student, sometimes it is skill, right? It's just, you're just not ready yet. That, 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 that's very possible. But when you, um, when you get into, uh, uh, I guess, a, a stronger skill set, with, with higher, you know, your ability is higher, right? Well, you've worked before, so clearly you're, you're, it's probably not the skill set, right? And that's where it, it, it kind of feels deceiving sometimes where, um, you know, people will be applying to work and they'll be like, okay, well, I'm, I'm a professional. Why, why aren't I getting calls, right? And it can feel personal, right? Because, well, well, I must be shitty then because I've, I've applied to every job that I've seen. I've done all these things. I should be able to find work, right? But unfortunately, you know, it's there's so many different factors, right? And that's the kind of next thing I want to talk about is whenever you're trying to find work, right? Fi like being qualified, right? The, the skill set is one aspect of finding work. And sometimes it's not even the biggest. Most of the time, I will say, is not even the biggest thing when it comes to uh, finding work in this industry, right? Um, because whenever, whenever there's some sort of job application or there's something going on, whatever, right? There is always, you know, a, a round, internal round first, right? Where it's like, you know, hey guys, uh, you know, they'll come up to the art team like, hey, uh, we need another concept artist. They'll come up to the concept artist team and say, hey, uh, do you guys know anybody? And they go, oh, yeah, I got, I got a friend. He's, yeah, cool, you know? And it's like, great, perfect. You know, and then the, that, that job never even makes it onto LinkedIn. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't even get there. Um, so that's a job that you'll never see, right? 
Um, and then it's like, you know, what if you, you're super qualified, you are the most fitting person for a role at a studio, right? Like you as a person, this hypothetical person, um, you're the best fit ever in, in the history of this company. They're not hiring right now. You know what I mean? You ever get that where they're like, oh, you know, you're great. Everything looks good. We just, you know, we're not looking for you right now. We won't be hiring until whenever. You know what I mean? We won't be hiring until next winter. Or we're all staffed up right now uh, for our project. If anything, you know, comes up, we'll let you know, right? That's That happens a lot. So that's another thing, right? It's like the right timing to find a job. Like you're looking for a job and there's a job out there, right? That's, I mean, that's that's already a lot. Right. You have to be looking for a job and then your dream place or the place that you want to work has to be hiring. That that's a that that match needs to be there. And then it's it's a lot of like, you know, finding out that um, maybe maybe you don't know anybody at the studio. Maybe you don't know anybody that can like get your portfolio to the top, because as soon as they're flipping through and then they're like, cool, where we went through 200 applicants out of a thousand. We have a good 20 here. Let's go with that. Well, the 800, they don't even get looked at. And there could be better applicants there. You just, they never looked at you, right? And there's a lot of that stuff where, you know, I think um, it can be very disheartening because you can you can throw in a lot of applications into this ether of, 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 a, of a job application process, right? And just not get any calls back. And it's, like, it's odd. It's like, well, I've, I've, I've done all these things. I, I, I know how this works. I've done it before. What's going on, right? It can feel very disheartening. It can feel like you're not good enough or you're not, you know, whatever, or you suck or this and that, right? Like, because it's a very personal thing. They didn't reject your application. They rejected you. That's what it feels like. Um, and, you know, the reason I want to talk about this is because just understanding that it's not you, most likely, right? Chances are, is a, a, a there's a lot of different reasons there's five or six different reasons why you know they would probably go with someone else or they're just not hiring or whatever um but the first thing that we always jump to is the fact that no oh, you know i'm not qualified i'm not good enough to i guess be an employee here and that can be very hurtful especially if you've been trying to apply and you're maybe say i don't want to say desperate but you're you know you need to find work asap right mm-hmm. it can be very very hard to i guess do that it can be very hard to to feel like you know oh yeah okay maybe maybe it was one of the other things because usually the idea is like well i guess i'm not good enough to to work so let me go find some other work right or whatever it is and um you know i don't know you could just i just wanted to talk about some of the other possibilities right just other things that uh can really make this this industry a very uh tough place to kind of be you know um Especially as as creatives, we're you know we're usually I don't know I don't want to say emotionally inclined, right? There's a, there's a level of like um, uh, I don't know artists are sensitive creatures. We always get that right. Uh, but you know the whole the whole idea is just remember like whenever you're you're applying for work wherever wherever you're trying to go, right? <clears throat> just remember that you know it's not always you, right? This there's a there's a there's a million other factors at hand here when you're when you're trying to work somewhere and um you know it's not always you know because of your portfolio right but that's kind of where you know the next thing the next like what can you do about that right because you know if well if it's not my portfolio then what can i do because it's it, it's it feels very like powerless and it feels very like Oh, you know, I have to, you got to be connected. You know what I mean? Which, I mean, I don't say is 100% true, but there's a level of truth to it. And I don't want to say connected in the, um, in the, uh, I don't know, the trashy kind of like, I don't know, hey, be my, be my LinkedIn connection type of thing, right? That doesn't work. <clears throat> but you do have to, you do have to kind of be around and know people. And I think um, something that can re- be really helpful is understanding um, that the more people know you, the more people that are in your bubble, right? The more eyes you have looking out for you, essentially, right? And I think um, people really do underestimate that. I feel that uh, it can be very, um, I don't know, very easy to ignore like, oh yeah, you know, there's these are just classmates I took class with and we just kind of moved on from there. But 
I don't know. It's I, I, I find I find that some of the uh, some of the best connections that you can make really are in classrooms with you. The people that are uh, taking classes, the people that are um, you know just doing assignments with you and this and that, or helping each other out, right? Especially like in in this in or especially in my Discord, I feel that like a lot of the students really like help each other out and stuff. And that's where like I, f I find some of like the best. I guess connection making <laughs> kind of happens just because you know everyone there is tr trying to help each other out and there's really no motive there because you know when you, if you've ever gone to an art event um it's gross it's <laughs> i don't say it like that but it's like it's not a it's not a fun place to be to be honest right like because you're like hey man can i see your portfolio you know it's like uh Let's get to know each other first, man. You know, it's a little personal. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's very much like, I don't know. It just feels very like this guy because you know they'll see, they'll see your portfolio. And if you're not quite up to their standards, like, okay, cool, thanks, man, and they'll walk away. Uh, versus like if you're like gangster, if you're like extra good, they're like, oh hell yeah, dude. Can I like get to know you better? You know what I mean? It, it's it just feels gross. It just doesn't. Um, it's just not a a great environment to be making those types of connections, right? But it's really like in class where it's like, oh hey, oh yeah, I saw that you did this. You know, I, I you know I, I was kind of doing something like it, or I really inspired this direction or whatever. And I feel like those those types of experiences for me have, have been some of the most, I guess, uh, life changing experiences for you know for for many reasons, right? I think for like when I when I was in class, we would just be hanging out. Like, you know, after, after, after class, we would go get dinner or after, uh, before class, we'd meet up for coffee or go work somewhere. Cause we're all cramming for whatever, uh, whatever assignment that we need to get done for the class that is, that's about to happen. Right. You know, normal student bullshit. Right. And so a lot of it really is like, you know, just, I guess being around talking to people because this industry, especially when you're applying for work. Uh, can be a harsh place. Um, you know, it, it can, there's a lot of dreams that are made. There's a lot of various uh, things that happen that, that can, that, that that's great. But there's so much heartbreak, I feel, especially like, especially now, I feel with a lot of like, um, uh, a lot of like the layoffs going on from various projects, a lot of, uh, different uh, animation studios just letting people go ai happening all this all that bullshit right and it's just like um you know it could just be tough and i feel like because you know i have friends that are now or they're looking for work i have uh you know students that are looking for work and it's it, it can it can be a very tough thing to kind of do you know what i mean like it's just it just feels like why are you doing it sometimes right because a lot of because even then, when you find your when you find work, when you when you get to where you're going, it's like, well, cool. This new program came out. You got to go learn that now. It's like, if you want to be competitive, if you want to keep your job um, for the next you know couple years or whatever it is, well, you gotta you gotta learn the new thing because that's that's what they're expecting, and it can be uh, it can be a nightmare, a nightmare. And I just kind of just want to talk about that just for a little bit to kind of just I don't know, just talk about things. So. Yeah. That's where I'm at. But yeah, I, I feel the ticking countdown, and just unfortunately, I'm not in the life stage that uh, facilitates being able to stay on top of things. But it's it's kind of nuts. You you see this stuff happening across the board. It's I was thinking I keep looking on Reddit at the IT related groups because I used to be in that field, and everyone's having a hard time getting hired. It's like they're getting the overqualified comments. They're getting uh, underqualified. They're getting ghosted on a hundred applications and only hearing one fallback. And they're also required to stay on top of certifications, be passionate about programming. And yeah. at, the one thing that I tell myself that at least gives me solace is, well, do I want to grind away trying to do something that i like or something that i don't like so i picked the one that i like yeah um, it's they seems like it's pretty tough everywhere and not at least right now 
just the way, the way things are going with companies seemingly in general um you just you have to be over prepared over competitive and over connected no matter where you are and it's, uh, it is hard yeah so i guess just kind of pick the thing that you can tolerate <laughs> yeah it's i mean it's it's gross too like even that overqualified thing is such a funny like it's like why does that even exist it's like it's either you're qualified or you're not right there's no over qualification right it's like that means oh that means i'll really do the job really well so why would i why would i not get hired for this it'd be dumb not to hire me right because like you know you can do too much for what they want to pay you yeah easily manipulatable new yeah hire. yeah i you know, I was, I was, um, I, I did fortunately get to get to talk to uh, get to talk to a a, uh, a pretty high up artist in a in a studio. I'm not going to say any names. Um, uh, he might he might actually watch the stream, <laughs> but um, so I, I got to talk to talk to an artist, and he was saying that during the hiring process uh, for their for their studio, they they are looking for like um, beginner to like mid level artists. Right, because uh, he was saying that a lot of uh, a lot of more senior level artists can can come with like um, I guess habits and and, and 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 traits and things that you know kind of make it a little bit harder to work with, right? And it's it's a very uh, it's a very interesting. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but just it's a very interesting dynamic where you know um, because we always think that like you know this person's been working for this many years, right? Um, it, it, you know, this person has been, has been in the industry for, for such a long time or whatever. Um, it, it'd probably be pretty easy for them to find work, right? You, like you would think so, right? But for whatever reason, that's, that's not the case. And, um, um, you know, I, it, it was interesting cause like the, any chance that you guys get, right. Talk to higher level artists, right. Whether that is someone that's like a junior level artist and you're a student or somebody that's, you know, you're a senior level lead level artist are talking to your, to your leads, whoever your boss is, talk to that person, right? Uh, because if you just associate with uh, the people in your kind of realm, right, you're not really learning what's in that next level because, you know, I, uh, um, when I, when I, when I got one of my first jobs, um, I was talking to uh, my, my art director and, um, you know, he had a funny way of kind of like thinking about things. He had a funny way of like when he would kind of explain things to me, it was very like, oh, yeah, you know, just just feel it out. Like, I just want this to kind of emote or evoke an idea. Right. And like and it sounds familiar because th that's the way I talk now. Right. For those that even like remotely know the way I crit. Um, that's where it came from. This artist, this this particular person. Right. And he didn't like teach me anything. He didn't like sit down and be like, hey, this is this is lesson 101. This is how I had this is how I, I'm going to you're my project now. I'm going to make you a bet. No, we, we, we just had lunch. It was like twice. It wasn't even like the whole time. Like we, you know, we just happened to be sitting next to each other, you know, for whatever reason. Right. Just because it's a cafeteria and we're all talking. And then I was just paying attention. You know what I mean? And I think like one of the one of the best things that you can do, especially when you when you start working at a studio, is just be around, right? Um, and the lessons don't come at you like school. Like in class, right? Uh, my job is to teach you. So we say, hey, here's the lesson. Like just like what we're doing here. Let me let me show you what's happening, and you're gonna do it, right? And then I'm gonna crit you. So it's like a step by step process. And then you know, in a class setting, you paid for it. In this setting, you're just watching, right? Uh, you can participate if you like, just so you know. But, um, you know, it's something where there's an active learning process here. So you kind of come here with that student mindset, right? But as a professional, uh, that doesn't happen. There's nobody, I mean, I don't want to say nobody, but more often than not, people won't teach you. Just, they just won't because they're not there to be teachers. They're there to be artists. They're there to, um, you know, do whatever it is that they need to do, right? Because they have their job, they have a family they got to go to when they're done, this and that. They have plans, alive, whatever, right? And so, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to work with this person, great, you know? And it ends up being like, oh, they don't teach at all. They don't do anything. Like, yeah, because they're not supposed to. Their, their job is to be your lead or an art director or whatever. Um, but all you got to do is listen, you know? I think uh, one of the best things that... Uh, uh, that kind of happens at a studio is when they invite you to like bigger meetings, right? Where 
They're like, hey, uh, you know, just observe, you know, just kind of sit in here and just listen, right? And some people are like, oh, well, why am I sitting here? Uh, why don't I just go, you know, go do my assignment, right? Why are you bothering me with this, right? Because <coughs> it's like, you know, why, why waste my time? Why am I uh, sitting here just listening to something that I guess essentially doesn't apply to you, right? Because you're not part of that meeting, really. You're just sitting there listening. And I think like that is how you become a lead right that's how you become whoever it is that you're trying to become um it's so huge getting to talk to these other artists because something that happens and um you know just you know i want you to kind of think about this as you're pursuing your careers right is if somebody says something that you don't agree with or that you don't understand um it should be your goal to figure out why Right. Because I, if I look at something, right, and I'm like, oh, I would have never done that. I do that all the time. Like when I look at a Craig Mullins painting specifically, right, like Craig Mullins, like a lot of like these high level artists, I'm like, oh, shit, I would have never done that, you know, because I know my process inside and out. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I wouldn't have painted like that. Right. And not saying it in a bad way to him, but saying it as a bad way to me. Me like, so what is he thinking about that I'm not thinking about? You know what I mean? Like, because. You know, I'm not Craig Mullins. Surprise, right? Uh, but um, the idea is, if you are not capable of thinking the way they think, then you're not even in the same ballpark. You know what I mean? Like, if you're not even able to make the same decisions, um, you have, you know, unfortunately, a long way to go. And that's kind of where um, a lot of this kind of I, this this mentality comes in, where whenever I'm working at a place and I hear my art director give me feedback or hear a client say something or, you know, somebody, you know, whatever, whoever, really, uh, anybody in charge, to be honest, but anybody in general, when they give you feedback and then say, oh, hey, can you change this thing or a whole, can you go about this way? And if you don't agree, you know, uh, the first thing you want to think about is what, why do you don't agree, right? Is it a taste thing? Is it like, uh, is it a, uh, an ego thing is it a whatever or are they onto something that you're not right and that's usually how i take it where it's like you know they're probably they're probably at a higher level right because you know there's decisions where like whenever you um uh whenever i work somewhere and i'm like i'm doing a painting and i had a good idea for this like, oh no we got to do it this way no like, you're like why you know what i mean that doesn't make any sense right because that's not you know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't seem smart. But then, you know, you get the full picture. Like, oh, okay, I get it now. You know what I mean? It's like, it's very like, um, it can feel very odd because you don't have the full picture. But you want to start thinking like them because that's, you know, that's probably the job that you want, right? I mean, you know, you don't want to be a junior forever. You want to start moving into those higher level positions. So getting yourself to a point to where you can think the way that your your lead does or your art director does you know, is probably priority, at least for, for, for the first little while. And I think um, that's probably one of the biggest things that, that, I, that I kind of like try to do whenever I'm uh, just interacting at, at a studio, right? Just listen, just, just let people talk, let people say things. And I think it was nice too, because the art director that I'm talking about, he, um, he's, he's kind of like, uh, I don't say naturally a teacher, but he is, you know, he, he just teaches, right? Yeah, whether he's like, uh, whether he's working, whether he's whether you're he's giving you an assignment or doing whatever, he, you know, he's just naturally a teacher. He's just explaining things to you, right? And those are the best because it's just free advice at that point. Um, obviously, it's up to you to use it, but you know, it's uh, it's it's pretty nice because he he's just talking and and you get these lessons, you get these life lessons, or you get these really strong, uh, I guess, um, ideas. And if you're, it kind of starts reframing the way you think, which is really nice. So. Sorry, I was kind of ranty. <laughs> Where's that tire at? Oh, it's right here. It's this one. Kampachi says, uh, what is the next new thing you are learning right now? Uh, and then uh, also says, uh, by the way, do you ever deal with stressful, sticky, strict, or picky people at work? If yes, how do you deal and manage with people like that? Um, yeah, so... Uh, the next new thing I'm learning right now, uh, I'm actually learning how to model better, to be honest. Uh, I am, uh, I'm trying to dive into the program just a little bit further. Um, I mean, for those that don't know me that well, I mean, you know, like, like I've said before, like I'm not really a modeler, right? I don't, 
I'm not a uh, somebody that really prides himself on their ability to model something, right? I mean, you know, I can this prop wise, right? This is about as far as I'll ever take things. So you know, you you judge how far that is to you, right? Uh, you judge you judge how how good that is, opposed to how you think that is, right? But um, you know, I'm tr I'm trying to get better at it, just because. You know, I, I definitely need to. I will say that. Um, and then after that, um, learning how to learning how to interact at a higher level is kind of where uh, where I am at right now. Like professionally speaking, right? Because something to understand um, when you start working, right? When you when you're somebody that is, I guess you have a job or whatever it is, right? Um, developing skills, yes is something that you have to do right like like hard skills like like drawing painting design right learning how to model for example right that's a hard skill right that's a that's a physical skill that you have to like you know do more of practice right absolutely that is something you got to do but what i'll say is um those aren't the only skills that you need and they're not even the most important skills that you should have right and it sounds kind of funny because it's like, well, I mean, shouldn't I get better at drawing and painting and stuff, right? Isn't isn't that what I do, right? Uh, but uh, whenever you start working, right, your your first goal really should be like, you know, oh yeah, get better at drawing and painting because you're probably behind. Chances are uh, you're probably not able to keep up with the studio as a whole, right? Just because you're you're newer, whatever whatever reason, right? Um, most most students right off the bat can't keep up uh like 90 99 of the time just can't keep up with what the professionals are expecting you to do right that's i mean that's natural that's not that weird um but after a while after about three years you'll, you'll probably get there it's really not that hard right it takes a second you might you know you'll be stressed stressed to to all hell right but chances are you'll get there within within three years most people get there faster but Three years is pretty pretty safe bet and so well once you do that you're done right you won the game no that's unfortunately you 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 just started you like you're, you're right at the starting line you know and um now it's like well so if i don't need to learn how to draw and paint anymore what is it then really it's how production works it's how things kind of operate it's understanding how to communicate with other people in the pipeline right because you know learning how to communicate with concept artists is what you've been doing for the last however many years you've been learning right oh here form language here's you know uh, design you know stuff like that pretty pretty simple uh pretty simple to understand like you know just things that we generally talk about as a as a as a group right uh but then right when you're in production you don't always talk with those type of types of people i've had to talk with game designers like level designers and they're not even artists half the time right or not i guess artists in the way that we're doing it right uh they're they're they're, they're their own type of artist but uh they're not like you know drawing and painting they they think about the, the gameplay mechanics and all these other you know things that we just that don't even cross our minds sometimes and learning how to communicate with that or even learning what they do is so important that's everything because once you're able to do that that's how you get to those higher levels right because you got to be able to talk to these people you got to be able to lead them and guide them and uh push them into the uh, you know to, to 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 make the best product that they can make right um so learning those skills i feel is is uh kind of where i'm trying to go more of right i think uh Obviously, I'm. I need to get better at drawing and painting. That's without a doubt, right? Um, I'm not. I'm not even near the level where I want to be. But uh, it's not on my priority list, you know. Because after a while, you can kind of start putting things on on the side burners. You know, if you have like a stove, there's always like a bigger burner and there's like smaller burners. Your bigger burner is the thing that you're focusing on. That's the thing that you're you're actively putting your time into, which is you know, which is great. In the first little while, that's always uh, that's always art. That's or usually always art, uh, because that's what we do. But eventually, you can start shifting that, right? You can take you can take your your art skills and put it on a smaller burner. It just needs to simmer. Still needs to cook. Still needs time. Doesn't need your full attention, right? And that's kind of what I mean. Where we're just trying to 
push other stuff, right? So. Oh, and then uh, do you ever deal with stressful, strict, or picky people at work? If yes, how do you manage uh, with people like that? Yeah, all the time. Uh, every studio that I've been to, there's always been somebody like that. Um, always. The, and for, for you specifically, every studio that you'll be at, there'll always be someone like that. So you're always, you're always going to deal with that. Um, the way I handle it is I do two things. Right. First thing is, um, you know, depends on who they are. If it's somebody that is uh, my direct superior, it's whatever they say. You know, doesn't matter. They have a bad idea. Great. Best idea I've ever heard. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, hey, can you change this thing? Sure. You know, don't even ask. You just don't even say anything. You just say, yep, we'll do. Uh, if it's the worst idea you've ever heard, you know what you tell them? Wow, that's inspiring. Wish I thought of that. You know what I mean? Uh, because they're your leads. They're your they're your boss. Uh, whatever they say goes. Um, yes, you can argue about it. Doesn't change that they're the ones telling you what to do, right? Uh, doesn't you know what I mean? Uh, and it sounds it's obviously it sounds very like you know very like not care kind of mentality. But that's the idea, right? Because uh, something that you know that you kind of learn as you're going is that uh, you might not know every decision that's being made at, at a single point in time, right? Um, there's going to be times where you get an assignment. They're like, hey, um, you know, hey, we need this green car, right? Green car going over a sand, sand dune, sunset. You're like, perfect. Got you, dude. Here you go. Here's my thumbnail. And they're like, dude, I told you red. We want morning. What are you thinking? You know what I mean? Um, and you know, that's, that sucks. That's not a, that's not a situation you want to be in. Right. But you got to remember they've probably been in five or six meetings where that's changed five or six meetings ago. Right. It's like something happened. The, uh, the, uh, the, the showrunner or whoever was like, Oh, Hey, you know, I'd actually rather have a red and the art director's like, great, cool. Red. Perfect. And then, um, you know, uh, they're like, oh, they're about to go tell you. And then they get called into another meeting because that's what art directors do or that's what higher higher level artists do. And then it's like, it's just this whole chain of like, oh, they're about to tell you. And then all of a sudden they got pulled into 20 meetings, right? If you've ever seen, um, like a, if you ever get a sneak peek at your art directors or your leads calendar, like if you're working in Google calendars, right? It's like, <clears throat> you ever seen a, you ever play Tetris and you lose? You know where it's like stacked to the top? That's their calendar, right? It's just stacked to the brim, right? It's insane. I'm like, and you always wonder like, you know, I was like, oh, why isn't this art director painting? All he does is give you feedback. Yeah, because he's fucking busy. You know what I mean? He's doing stuff. And uh, so there, there's times where things like that happen and you have to roll with the punches. And I think just a little bit of understanding on that front uh, really does go a long way. So it does suck sometimes, right? You, you have a strict person that, you know, says things or whatever uh, but just uh, understand sometimes you don't have all the answers you don't have every single thing that um every meeting note that they had so on and so forth right so pretty uh it sounds kind of funny but that's really what it is <clears throat> um if that's if it's my lead no questions i just tell them exactly what it is if i have a thought if i'm like Oh, hey, yeah, I think we should, I think it'd be better if I did this. I give them another version. I say, hey, oh, hey, I, this is what you asked for here. Let me, but, but this is what I think we should go with, right? Cause this is my, this, you know, I'm, I'm showing you what I think as the, as the concept designer, right? But I still gave them their version. If someone's asking for a steak dinner, you don't give them fish, you give them steak, right? But you're like, hey, but I think this is probably better for you. And they're like, all right, cool. We'll, we'll try it. We'll see what happens, you know, if it's cool. But you could be missing some information. Like, oh no, but the client really wanted red because, you know, it's sentimental to their their story. It's uh, this, this car is an embodiment of the sun and the sun's favorite color was red you know, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So little things like that uh, can really go a long way. Um, if it's somebody that is not in charge of me, then I have to think about, well, is it my boss's boss or is this just some random person that's like just weirdly being strict? Um, you know, and I think the best thing is just be courteous, right? Uh, if it's somebody that doesn't really, you don't really encounter that much, uh, just stay out of their way, right? Just don't interact that much. Whatever they say, just do it, you know, or Try not to let it bother you, I guess. <laughs> but um, 
if it is someone you have to interact with a lot and they're not really your lead or something where it's like if it's like a coworker, right um you know try talking to them about it you know sometimes that can be pretty helpful so a couple different scenarios there i don't know i don't know if, if that answered your answered your question but uh but yeah I had this uh, this coworker at uh, one of my studios, and he was like, just he always seemed pissed off. You know what I mean? He just and you know didn't want to talk to him at all. He's just like when you see him at work, he's like just grumpy. You know what I mean? Like you just don't talk to him, and he's just known as that. So you just stay away, you know. But then like we met him at a party uh, at like a, a, a company party thing. He was great, super nice, this and that, and and then I was like, you know, man, like. It's really hard to talk to you because you're like super grumpy. You're like, yeah, because, you know, I'm just tired and, you know, just bad feedback or whatever it is. You know what I mean? And so obviously, they shouldn't handle things that way, but you can't change the way they ha they're handling something. And it's just, you know, it is what it is. Um, I guess for me, it really it does come down to just empathy, right? Understanding that people have things going on in their lives that you might not understand or know about and i mean you know you do you do what you can uh you know you, you put yourself out there to kind of talk to people but at the end of the day you're like it's nothing you can do about it right so <laughs> it is funny though i uh, i do think that the entertainment industry is an interesting one where uh we as a i guess as a, as a group it's always like because because art is such a, uh, uh, um, I don't know, a like a dream job type of scenario, like it's perfect, right? It's like this place that, like, it's great. You know, there's all these, um, there's all these things that uh, you know, it's you don't have to worry. Like, you know, I used to work in fast food, so I know what a shitty job is or whatever, right? Um, and then you know you get to you get to your studio job and it's supposed to be great and then it's the same shit you know what i mean it's the same thing it's there's people dynamics it's you know it's it's a company it's 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 money at the end of the day and it's uh i don't know i think i think people start finding really quickly that like these these jobs like they're great and that, you know i wouldn't i wouldn't do it for anything else but it is something where um i guess kind of go into it with the understanding like we're, we're just it's just a job at the end of the day right it, we're just people we're just contractors right we're just people we're just plumbers at the end of the day right we're just people that got hired to do a job we have an expertise you know uh but we don't own the house you know what i mean like because people go in this is like oh yeah i'm gonna be the most amazing game designer in the world i'm gonna make indie games i gotta get my experience first i gotta do these things i want to be a creative director i'm like that's great man sure you know um and then they go into the jobs and they realize like oh yeah there's like all these decisions are being made and no one really consults me or or they don't really take my opinion seriously and stuff like that and it's a lot of that kind of stuff and it feels very odd because the whole time you always think about you, you're always thinking like oh i really want to contribute to this thing and but you know it's just like a plumber and so you can recommend some stuff, but if they want to do it a certain way, then, you know, obviously you're the expert, right? You should, you know, obviously your, your, your opinion is valued, but you know, you do what they tell you to do because it's not your house. It's not your, it's not your, you know, it's not your, uh, it's not your obligation, right? It's theirs. They're the ones that are putting money down. They're the ones that are putting the risk in. And I think, um, a healthy amount of, or a healthy understanding of what that means can uh, really go a long way, especially for, uh, for people that are coming into our, our, I guess our industry, right, our our our, our workspace, it's, it can be tough. It's a, uh, it's a weird, uh, it's a weird adaption. Like I think something that happens a lot is, you know, you you get you get your first job and you kind of start, you kind of step on a lot of toes just because it's like, oh, I, I recommended this thing, but they got really mad. I was like, yeah, man, because you're you're not really supposed to do that. <laughs> There's a lot of like those types of uh, things happening, and you know, out of out, out of the best intent that you have, you know, it can be very, uh, I don't know, just very, very off-putting at the very beginning. So,
Ooh, where's my brush? Bro, let's go. What's up, Discord people? How's it going? How's life? <clears throat> Pretty good. Nice. I had one kind of like comment question type deal, kind of related a little bit back further before the annoying coworker talk. Yeah, yeah what's up? Um, yeah, just like one thing that I've been thinking about more is like uh, instead of you know being at the point where you feel like you don't have any of the skills and you just need to work on that, but more approaching to where you might need to be skill-wise, but then not really knowing exactly what the studios need because you've never worked there. And then trying to figure out, like, you want them to see your portfolio and think that you will be able to do uh, the job without... You know, need, of course, they're still going to have to tell you what to do, but you, you don't want to appear to be like you don't know what sort of things they're going to ask for. So you want to add that to your portfolio, but you don't even know what that is. So that's kind of like, how yeah. can you show that you're prepared, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I had that uh, a little while back. I was applying for a job and there was no, um, there was no, uh, uh, I guess, um, description of the thing everything's under nda so they couldn't show me anything all right so i was like <laughs> so i was like so what do i show you know what i mean like it's it's odd because it's like well they they need i need to show them that i can work for them but they won't show me anything so i can't bring anything that will make it seem like i'm employable you know what i mean um <laughs> and i think something the, the best thing you can do right is is talk to talk to people that you know that work where you want to work right that's i mean that's the that's the easiest thing because it's like you want to work at Riot, you know, then go talk to people who work at Riot. That's the usually usually the best bet, especially somebody that works on the team that you want to work at because, you know, there's things that they're looking for. And team dynamics change, um, you know, as uh, as you're as you're progressing through your career, as you're kind of developing, there's a lot there's going to be a lot of like, you know, your um maybe like when a studio when 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 you first heard of them was like all painting right or they're all 2d work and then all of a sudden i don't know where they shift to like they shift to th pure 3d at that point art director changed or the game title changed or whatever and you, you just got to know these things right um but yeah the first thing you can do is you know talk to the people that work there uh, after that you know, you can do some research on whatever titles or whatever titles they work on or whatever things that they're currently doing, right? Because it's, it's usually not too big of a secret. Like, I mean, it's NDA, but it's not like, it's not like a secret as to like what people are working on. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, for example, you know, oh yeah, for example, like Blue Eye Samurai got launched for a second season or greenlit at the very least. Um, I don't know. I don't know when production's starting or if production's starting or whatever, but um, you know, you can probably bet that the same type of work that they liked the first time is probably going to be what they're looking for the second time, right? Roughly, there's you know things change for sure, but um, yeah, that does that that happens, right? And so you can do research that way, know what project they work on, know what they do. That way, you can be ready for the, the things that they're, uh, they're 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 kind of looking for, right? Um, and after that, it's I mean, you know, it it is something where it, it just takes it takes some time, but it you know, just showing that you know what production even is. You know what I mean? Like because for example, let's say let's say I was like trying to hire you, right? And then all of a sudden I'm looking at your work and you're like, Well, you don't really do things the way I need you to do them because you know, how how would you know, first and foremost, right? But then two it's like, well, I mean, I can see that you can do a turnaround, so I'm pretty sure you can do whatever I need you to do, right? Because I need you to do a ortho view, right? <laughs> or, you know, you're showing these 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 different ideas inside of your, your, your portfolio that's like, oh, I know what production generally wants, right? It's not about, like, being 100% precise 
it's just being like, uh, you know, I can kind of tell what you're looking for. So I, I, I kind of have what you need. You know what I mean? Um, I know what it's like to work in production. Like for me, for example, a lot of my jobs, like nowadays, right? Because even like, obviously I, I tell people like, hey, you know, you should be, you should be, uh, uh, I guess, being specific about where you want to work and do all these things and, you know, get hired that way. But so on. So, you know, the same, same shit I always say, right? Um, but in my portfolio, I just show up with my standard one more often than not. If there's, if, if they're like specifically, um, I don't know, more into, uh, um, a certain style, uh, you know, I'll, you know, if I'm applying for infinity ward or, or like, you know, uh, call of duty or something, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to add some live action stuff in there or some more realistic things versus my animation portfolio. But generally speaking, I show up with the same portfolios more often than not. And that's usually just because my portfolio kind of encompasses most of that already, right? Where it's like, you know, I have production work. I have, you know, various things that would show that I, that I know how to work in a production, maybe not their production specifically, but a production. Um, and I think that's what most people are missing. It's like, you know, whenever they design a building, they don't really understand like how to design that building. They don't understand like what needs to be shown to really make sense of this all. You know what I mean? It's like, there's like, oh, I, I know how to design a building, but they don't show it in the way that I need to see it. And it, it looks very like student versus like, like a professional. You can kind of tell like what that production process was like. It's very clear uh, what they were intending on with certain ideas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Makes sense. It's just hard to, especially with like games stuff. I feel like there's probably a lot that goes because that's what I'm aiming for. Yeah. And I think there's probably a lot of like discussion and like ideas and things that happen behind the curtains that you don't even see when you look up uh, portfolios of the people who work there. Like, so like, I'm just kind of trying to rack my brain for like, okay, what kind of things can I show in this project that would show like, oh, I'm, I'm, I am thinking about like what this means to be a game as opposed to just like, here's a nice picture. Yeah. And that, I, I think for me, that comes down to understanding, like don't design for concept artists, right? You're like, cause you know, when people design, they're like, oh, Hey, there's a, I need to design this pretty picture. So I'm designing for concept artists, generally speaking. Right. But what you want to design for is for modelers, right? Like you're, you're, you're showing everything that you need to show. There's, you know, there's a picture like this where it's like, oh, cool. There's a dune buggy doing the dune buggy thing. Great. But then, you know, as you're kind of going through it, um, start showing those orthos, start showing those descriptive things, show functions, show all these things, because, you know, you have a couple shots that are, you know, one, you know, a, a inspiration type shot, you know, like we've talked about before. And then there's the, oh yeah, I also know how to inform another person. And that's usually universal, right? It's like, regardless of where you're working, it doesn't matter what you're doing or who you're doing it for. Chances are your painting is going to go to something and they need to, they need to see that. If they see that you, you understand what that even means, uh, you're going to have a lot higher of a chance uh, working somewhere. Cause you're like, Oh yeah, they know how to design for a team. It's, it's that for a different production mentality that really gets you pretty far uh, because that's universal, right? Even though, you know, um, a lot of my projects are different styled, right? The working process was almost the same just because uh, we just, you know what I mean? We just were, we all work the same way. It, it, productions look very similar for a reason because it's probably the most efficient way to do things, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Great question. So right now, I'm just taking my time. Uh, you know, we only have 30 minutes left. So and I just kind of set up the painting. This is just like usual, right? We're just kind of slowly kind of building our way in. And what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get some of that weathering in, right? I just, all I did was just start, I just colorized the wheel, you know? And I just colorize the same color as the sand or roughly same color as the sand. I can like change that later, but then start kind of masking it back in. And you can do that everywhere where like, you know, say we go with the body, for example. <laughs> where I have like this body here and I'm like, Oh cool. I want to do some weathering effects. Like I want I want some scratches. So I'm going to desaturate. I'm going to brighten it up because I want this to feel like metal underneath, like aluminum or something and then mask it out. 
And then you go in here and you're like, okay, cool. What if there's like a rock chip? Cool. Get a super textured brush. Like what if it, you know, it hits something it, or like parts of it are rubbing off right here, right? And so now you start getting forms. You don't have to worry about the painting as much because even like here, right, where I paint, there's even the light side and shadow side depending on that form. And so I'm just going to like just scratch it up. You know, I'm just worried about the shape and the texture more so than the actual, uh, I guess, um, volumes of this of the pieces. And through this method, right, you can get some pretty sophisticated results. I'm going to keep doing this for however long I need to keep doing this for. Uh, but for those of you that are like following along, do the homework, whatever, when you're uh, weathering and stuff, right, try to, you know, try to, uh, you know, find ways to add scratches effectively because now it's even on a separate layer so I can just take it off or put it back on whenever I need it, right? So. Dude. And now like it just has it just has character. You know what I mean? It just has like just a little bit more like I don't know, just something to it. It just feels like it's used. It feels like someone actually drove with this thing versus like, oh yeah, it's brand new off the shelf, you know. And like collisions and stuff. You know. Especially like front areas front corners and then areas of where you know interaction points um because those the front areas are gonna like you know it's going you know cars drive in one direction generally speaking um so there's a there's a uh there's a level of like where that kind of happens in one direction versus you know and then uh, versus like the back end or underneath things and then there's the spots that uh, uh people touch door handles you know uh, foot gar or foot like step areas and stuff like that and gets uh you can get some pretty nice sophisticated spots like dude look at that that looks sick um ian says what would you say is the best way to join the assignments at this point in the series slash stream stream slash lectures so um like i said I, th I think in one of the other weeks if you're trying to join and you want to join like this week, right? Where we're like taking a model or, you know, taking your, I guess, design that's already at a certain point and then pushing it further, right? Um, what you can do is get your own designs from something you are, you're already working on, you know, for or whatever, and then kind of start doing the rest. Like, let's say, for example, you, you did a model of a thing in, in a class or a personal thing or whatever, right? You're like, oh yeah, I mean, this would be kind of a cool thing to take further. Just use that, you know? You already have a model. Just now, just place it in a scene. If you already have it in a scene, you know, then, you know, maybe pick a different model. But um, you should, you know, most most artists here will have other things that they've already worked on. Um, and you can kind of like go through that way. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, you, you don't get the benefit of like starting from, you know, from scratch and having a, a completely new project that's completely in line with what I'm doing. Uh, but that's not the point, right? Because all you have to do is understand what I'm doing here. I'm, I modeled, I designed something out with a certain function and purpose. Um, and then now I'm putting in a scene to help sell it better, right? And that's really, that's, you know, that's not that crazy of an idea to, to kind of, uh, to kind of work in, right? So, but yeah, take your own projects. But also, right, there's even people that are like joining late, whether like they're starting week one now. I, I think I got a submission today or yesterday on um, somebody starting their assignment, right? You can just start. Right, I'll give you feedback regardless of what what uh, what phase you're in. If you want to be part of the live, where you're like, "Hey, I'm," you know, we're just, uh, I can like give you feedback like live, and we can talk about it. You know, uh, that that's you have to join this specific assignment. But if you're just like, "Oh yeah, I just want, I still want to do the assignment, but I don't necessarily need the world to see it." Not that the world sees this, but you know, it's like, uh, you know, you don't necessarily need everyone to kind of witness that. You know, you can just start wherever so the hard part that i find about modeling um in particular is that um you kind of have to match you know what i mean like you can't just like 
you can't just make a model and then start painting, right? You have to find all these like different like tip, these tricks and things to to make your 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 painting quality match. Because if I just started painting these scratches, these uh, these dents and stuff, it just wouldn't look right. I mean, maybe I can make it work, but it's a lot harder that way, right? But like with this, where I'm painting with the actual model itself, just you know a lighter version or you know whatever, like whatever color I need, I, I need the aluminum. I want the aluminum underneath to kind of show or whatever the base coat is to kind of start showing up because uh, the paint got chipped off for the anodized parts peeling or whatever. Um, that's what I'm trying to do here. So um, I don't I'm not worried about like matching that that uh, that fidelity because it is the same fidelity, right? I just need to make sure that my painting isn't hitting weird spots like glass right there or if it's not like look, it's not crossing like that where it looks like it was painted, right? It's like actually purposefully designed to where like, oh, something hit it. So I'm like, boom, you know, something, a rock flew at it. So it's kind of like off, you know, stuff like that. So we're going to continue this um, throughout next week as well. I'm probably going to take this to a finish um, probably by next week. Uh, so what we're going to do is I, obviously I'm going to continue this throughout the week just like normal. And then uh, I'll show you kind of where I would take something like this and kind of show you the two, the two paintings I did, right? The the centipede one um, and, then the, uh, and then this one here and just kind of show you some of the pieces that it took to kind of get there, right? Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll kind of talk about some future stuff from there, so... But uh, yeah, for now, it's uh, we're just kind of weathering. I'm just kind of starting to get things set up. Like, you know, just slowly integrate things. It's going to take a second, right? Something with 3D, something hard about 3D is that whenever you do this, right, it feels very odd, right? Because right now I'm looking at it, right? You can really tell where I painted and you can tell where the 3D model is. For one, you know, because, you know, you guys are avid supporters of, of this live stream. But also... Um, you know, it's the fidelity is different, right? It just looks different uh, because the quality on the 3D is so much higher than the painting quality I have at the moment. So, you know, it's obvious, right? And, you know, I'll, my job right now would be to paint up the, uh, the background and the floor and then paint down some of the, uh, some of the, uh, the, the, the various pieces in this, uh, on this vehicle and stuff like that, just to kind of make it all match, right? So. Ooh, the top of doors right there. Sick. Even like scratched up down here. This buggy is looking kind of nice though. I, I I do enjoy where it's going. I um I was having a lot of fun with it this week. Just I was just kind of modeling it in my spare time and uh it uh, turned out okay. I was looking. I was like, "Dude, I'd rather. I'd so much, so much rather drive this than uh, the uh, the the buggy that they give you <laughs> in the game." But uh, that's neither here nor there, right? I was pulling. Uh, my references kind of like started evolving. Where like, I think because uh, I still need to do some stuff. Like if I were to do this in a, um, I guess in a normal manner, I would want it. I need to show this in a boat form, which which is actually very doable because right now. You look at it, this, I mean, you know, you can see if you just remove the, the suspension and the wheels, I mean, that's a boat. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's like not a, it's not like a, an amazing thing. But, I mean, you can see how that would be a boat pretty easily, right? So, I think that works out pretty well. And then the wheels, I was thinking, like, what if it can, like, shrink up or down? If it's, like, a street street mode or whatever where it's, like, there's roads and stuff, it can, like, shrink down. That's what these, uh, these I guess... Uh, these these lines, these radiating lines kind of come out. They feel like it expands and they can contract to a smaller wheel or something. That'd be kind of fun. Um, and then now, like, in their off-road off, off terrain mode, it can get bigger, right? Because a lot of, like, um, cars and stuff that, that go off-road, they have, like, these big, thick, humongous tires because they have to go through, like, mud and over rocks and stuff like that, so... But, uh, but yeah, 
yeah, the design kind of shifted a bit. It was, uh, I don't know. I was really enjoying where I was going. I was feeling it. I, I liked the little motifs, like kind of putting Pokeballs wherever I can or including some of those, uh, some of those ideas from like, mo like real life where, so something that was kind of fun in, uh, in older race cars, um, there's this, there's these X's that they put on their, uh, on their headlights. Right. And it's, it's cool because, um, back in the day, headlights were made of glass. And so when they're racing, a rock would come up and it hit it and you're, you're going fast, you know, it's like a bullet sh shooting through your headlight. And the issue with that is the glass from the headlight can fall on the ground and then it can kind of mess up the track or mess up people's other people coming down the track. And so they tape it and that way. It kind of stays together a little bit easier. Right. Um, and nowadays, you know, headlights are made of like plastic and stuff, so it's not really that big a deal. Um, but, you know, a lot of people still do tape it over just for the aesthetic. And I was like, oh, that's kind of fun. Especially like if you're off road, there's a lot of rocks and stuff and this and that. I thought that'd be a fun little addition to kind of throw in or even like this um, this train handle thing. Like this is from, I mean, I, I, I just made it. It's just a thing that I that I modeled out. But it's from the idea of uh, of of Japanese um, trains just because there's uh, that little thing they hold and in JDM culture they they just put that on the back there's actually one on the back I don't have uh, I don't have a back view of it right now but um, there is one on the back where uh, I guess where I would hang it or even like oh shit I'll pull up the design we'll kind of walk through it real quick because I didn't really do a walkthrough of this which I'd love to kind of show you guys where's it at <clears throat> uh, I'll do the original model where's it at Dope. Let's turn that plane off so we can see that. Let's do cycles. No, not cycles, EV. <clears throat> All right. So, you know, I the, the first thing I did was there was this thing in the back that I had, but I, I didn't like it because I the the if you ever look at uh, off-roading cars, the back bumper is always missing or it's like super shallow because what happens is whenever they're going... Um, down a slope that back bumper can get ripped off or it can it can kind of get in the way of um you know i guess coming down off that trail pretty clean so i just i just brought everything higher and basically made anything that would touch would be a wheel right even looking at that silhouette here you don't see anything pop out and that's on purpose same here where you know the the front guard right will never be interacted with it's always the wheels that kind of hit things first in this case there's a there's a bumper down here as well but if you remember from the original one this was actually flat this was lower and it popped out too far but with that same mentality of like going up and down a hill you know there's like this there's a clearance that needs to happen and uh you know, I, 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 I just moved it up and it gave it a more aggressive feel first and foremost. Right. Uh, cause it actually feels kind of nice. It, it kind of, uh, hits those, uh, those fog light container areas a little bit better. Um, but it, I mean, you know, it, it's also a, a function thing, right? And that's the cool thing. Like if you've ever, if you ever get into cars or get into anything, right? Like for, for those of you watching, just get into stuff. It doesn't matter what it is. Like I was into fountain pens. I, I still kind of am. Photography, cars, whatever it is, start learning, right? Because these things translate into your designs, right? A lot of these things that I'm doing here is just stuff that I picked up on when I was just watching videos, right? Yeah, here's that thing in the back. I couldn't put it on the bottom. Uh, well, I mean, I could, but you know. And also these red tow hooks. Like when when uh, when off-roading cars get stuck, they're off you just have a buddy that will just like kind of rope them up and then like pull them out right and there's two in the front two in the back right or two in the front two in the back and it's little things like that that really kind of help the the thing feel i don't know just um realistic right because a lot of these things they, they exist for a reason right and when you design a car if you don't know what you're looking at right it's really hard to remember to include it right or even these lights up top a lot of uh a lot of off-roading cars will have these kind of uh, these top lights that uh, kind of like illuminate the entire like you know outdoors. And they could do it like at night. It's insane, um, but it's cool because just including some of those pieces really makes this feel like what it's supposed to feel like, right? And like you know, referencing that off-road Miata going from that same I guess dimensions, right? It's a two-seater car. There's a trunk, and I kind of like moved everything kind of forward. 
but it's like, it's a two seater car, same general type of proportions with a, a lot bigger wheels. And then having some sort of a canopy, just like in the, uh, the photography aspect, the photography safari cars and knowing that I need that 360 view, right? Nothing obstructs. So I'm in the car and you can like look out, oops, you can like look out and see anywhere. Right. And this, you know, this whole rooftop can move up. You know, I was thinking like, oh, what if like when you park the car, it kind of like just sinks in like that and it just closes off. Maybe the wheels can kind of shrink down and it's just, it's like parked, right? It's just taking up the least amount of room possible. And then whenever it drives off, it just like, you know, it kind of goes up, you get in the car and then, you know, it's this whole thing, but it's, it's nice. It's this, this nice little package. And it's cool because this piece right here is just this piece flattened, flipped upside down and then modified slightly, right? It's all like the same pieces. Same reason why the dash, right, looks like, I mean, obviously I still need to model stuff, but the dashboard looks like the headlights or the way they used, they used to look like. These clearly, right, I just took this piece and then duplicated it down, but modified it from there. So a lot, a lot of thinking went into this, but it was, it was fun because it was, it's believable, right? It's, I mean, obviously it's a very stylized you know, kind of cartoony-ish car, but it's like, uh, there's a lot of thought that goes behind it. And these these purposeful decisions is really what makes your designs kind of function really well. You know what I mean? So, Finn Downs says, how, do you, how did you learn so much about off-road vehicles? Um, I just, I, you know, I, I just look at a lot of things. I watch a lot of videos because I, you know, because I work a lot. So, you know, there's times where I'm just like, um, I'm just looking at videos and I, I get kind of get into this rabbit hole of like just, uh, just searching things, you know, and I, I don't even know that much about it. I just, I know a lot of the surface level details. I've never like done it. So that that's like a whole other level of, of knowledge that you'd want to get into. Um, but it's something where, you know, as you're, as you're developing as an artist, right, that's, that's just bringing it back to what I was talking about last week of like, be a person, you know what I mean? Like go experience things, have interests because you're going to know something about your hobbies that I had no idea about. And then those ideas, you know, are going to permeate into your designs in some sort of way, hopefully. And then with that, you know, you can start creating a, a more interesting design language for your audience, especially whenever you're creating something for an audience that uh, knows something about what you're doing, right? Because, you know, like you ever hear that thing where um, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, there's this... Uh, I designed this car or this gun or whatever. That, and then the people that are actually supposed to know about it, they're like, oh, that, that doesn't make any sense because why would you do that? That You know what I mean? Like it just doesn't function because you're missing some sort of information that would make you, you know, better understand that idea. And it's, it's tough to hear it sometimes, but it's true, right? Because the people that would know are the ones that would enjoy this, right? The people that kind of, if you're making a car game, right? People that like cars are the ones that are going to play it. Right. So you have to kind of dive into this. That's why like um, people that work on Call of Duty games, they really know about military stuff. Right. They just there's this whole, you know, culture behind a lot of like military weaponry and, um, you know, just different guns and, and, and vehicles and stuff that they use because these games, they need that level. They need those that level of understanding for you to make something believable because, you know, people get called out all the time. Be like, no, that's that's not a. That's not that's not from World War Two. That's like that's Cold War stuff. How does that exist now or whatever? You know what I mean? And it, it, it kind of sucks when you get called out, but they're not wrong, you know, so. Well, let me check the uh, the live stream chats. Hold up. <clears throat> ah, Finn Down says uh, the most important question I've learned to ask in in the last in in the last year is is there a design doc? Before I would ask, what were your ideas behind this level, or did you have any references? 
which are questions which make sense to an artist, but never to the level designers at my studio. If I get to design doc, I actually get the information I actually need. Yes, right? It's like, because when we talk, we know what we're talking about, right? We know, we know what we're saying, but yeah, they don't know sometimes. It's not their fault. It's just, you know, that's not part of their job, right? It's not, they don't know what we know, right? And it's really hard to communicate those things and um, finding that language. I, th I think that's a tough thing too. There's a, um, there's a uh, there's a language barrier not not i mean maybe even literally like you know from one language like spanish to to english for example right that that definitely happens but there's a career language right when i'm talking about like you know uh design language form language big medium small like some people don't know that right uh, some people don't understand what that means and it, it can be very difficult to uh I guess communicate at that level because you know you have to tell them that hey there's something wrong with your design but you're using words that only you know and that can be very uh, a very difficult situation to kind of be in and learning what that means for your studio ask you know understand what it is because sometimes they're like oh we don't really have a design doc right oh but they have this other thing that's exactly what a design doc is you know they they, they just call it something else whatever you know and there's a lot of that <clears throat> But that's uh, that's part of the job, you know. That's that's what we do at the end of the day. That we just we we have to figure out what all this stuff means because uh, to do our job effectively, you know, we got to know, right? Sick. Let's go. Oops, not so saturated. There you go. Dude. <clears throat> I think for me, like, rendering like this kind of like i don't know has been it get, kind of gets to this this fun kind of zone right i feel like there is a um there's a time where whenever i'm starting to paint and stuff it gets very uh, uh i don't know meditative right where you know i'm just going you know i think whenever i'm doing this like i'll just turn on a movie or do whatever and i'll start kind of like just working through the ideas right i'm just like you know piece by piece making sure that the logic lines up making sure that you know everything kind of matches up accordingly you know and it just you know, you're kind of just going you know i feel like because uh, there's this idea whenever you first start it's like oh i hate rendering or i hate i hate uh this very tedious work and for me it's like dude it's the best time ever i love doing this stuff because like not gonna lie i hate thinking you know i don't want to say i hate thinking but like when you're working it's like you have to think so much it's like there's so much thought that goes like all these questions like for, if you guys are like you know paying attention during my crit se uh, sessions right where like we're, we're giving feedback to people i'm just asking questions the whole time and half the time it's like oh i didn't think about that you know what i mean it's it's a lot of that where it's like hey where are you what's the design language that you're going with here or did you think about you know even even talking about like with uh with matthias's um building designs today you know even thinking about why they built up there and then you go through this logic of like okay cool so there's some sort of danger and then there's some sort of like culture here and then there's you know different materials and different locations that all that they're all from and so on and so forth and it's tiring because you're building this whole culture behind like uh you know like this whole culture from nothing and you have to go through this chain reaction of like Oh, they only have this material, so they can't build this anymore. Or they only do this, or they don't. They only have that, and it's a very, um, very draining experience. <laughs> I know for <clears throat> for me at work, uh, usually like my day, if I don't have my ideas out, like if I if I'm not done thinking by like twelve o'clock, uh, that day is shot. It's over. Like whatever whatever idea that I'm thinking about getting usually doesn't happen, just because. I'm just tired. You know what I mean? You're just like exhausted and you don't want to like think anymore. But what I can do is I can render. I can do this all day. Like, you know, even talk. And the cool part about like doing the live streams and stuff is because I'm focused, 
And you'll, you'll kind of sometimes, maybe, maybe you hear it, maybe you don't, but you'll hear me shift where whenever I'm rendering and stuff, I can have full conversations pretty easily. But then there's times where I'm like thinking through stuff and you'll hear me stuttering or you'll, you'll hear me like kind of lose my train of thought or whatever. And it's like, it's just because there's just so much more, my brain is so much more involved in those parts, you know, versus like right now I'm just putting sand in cracks, you know, <laughs> it's so like, I don't know. I don't say simple, but it's very like just mundane. It's very like just whatever. Yeah, so I'll be working on this throughout the week. We'll get this to a pretty good level, but uh, hopefully you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I'm probably gonna do a couple levels of this, right? Something that 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 is gonna happen for sure is that as I'm developing this, you know, the first layer you're seeing now is like, you know, the the just the aluminum pass or whatever. But then, you know, it's uh, start like adding the rust layer, start adding the decals, start adding, you know, whatever it is. And because the model is pretty much there, right? There's, I mean, there's, there's some things that I could be doing better and so on and so forth, but you know, it's at a pretty good spot. And all I got to do is just compile them together. Now I got to make this, this painting look like it works together. It's not a, it's not a 3d model in a 2d environment. It's supposed to be, you know, an illustration that kind of works together seamlessly. And that's what I'm going to be aiming for for the next, uh, you know, probably a week, week, two weeks, whatever it is, uh, to try to get all this done. So. Any final questions as we're wrapping up? So we've got about 10 minutes left. We're just trying to start uh, start getting those, um, those final final thoughts and crits and concerns. <clears throat> cool. but yeah hopefully um you know for for those that are like wanting to participate and stuff like that or you know you're looking for some uh feedback and just just level building as a whole right next year hopefully for me uh, it, uh i'm playing on this being a pretty pretty involved thing right like a little i would say a little bit more involved than than kind of now uh with some of the projects that we're doing so you know, I just, uh, I just uh, as we as we wrap up, I'll just talk about some of the thoughts for uh, for next year's streams. Right, um, it is going to be a little bit more structured. It's going to be a little more open as well. Uh, you can kind of do whatever you want uh, as long as it kind of pertains to the topic. I mean, you can always do whatever you want, right? Uh, but if you want feedback and stuff like that, it has to it has to pertain to whatever subject that that we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> and it's going to be a a monthly thing, you know. So. Uh, we'll change we'll, we'll change topics maybe we can vote on a couple if you guys really like um but uh we'll uh well i'll, I'll kind of have the first couple laid out that way that way people kind of know what uh, know what i'm talking about before we start kind of going in with suggestions and stuff like that so but yeah it's, it's gonna be fun i really uh i think that uh i think people are gonna get a lot out of it and i want this i want it to be basically for every month that we do it's every skill, or not every skill, but the biggest skills that you need to kind of get to where you're going in that subject. If you're trying to get better at rendering, trying to get better at design sketching, whatever it is, right? Uh, hopefully, <clears throat> with these, uh, with each month, you kind of go into it, maybe not knowing as much, and then you come out of it, like, I guess, able to kind of tackle your own project, at least to a, to a certain degree, right? It's not going to be perfect, right? Obviously, there's always going to be a level of, like, understanding that you need to achieve but you know you'll be hopefully you'll be a lot closer and that's that's really all i'm looking for right so cool <clears throat> like really wearing out these uh these sections over here where like they're uh 
they're like where all the moving parts are or, or like behind all the moving parts. Dude, that's where all these scratches happen. All the rocks kind of shoot up and stuff like that. That's what I'm looking for, bro. Let's go. Oh, I need some numbers and stuff for this. I'm gonna like, <clears throat> I wanna like uh, kinda deck this out because I want this to be, if you've ever played the modern Pokemon games, right? Um, vehicles look kinda actually kinda cool, especially in like the main games. Um, you know, the like the bike and all that stuff. Like there's, you know, some cool coloring and stuff like that. You can pick like your different skins and stuff. Right now, I kinda base this off the Safari Ball. If you guys have played before, there's a ball for the Safari Zone. And, um, you know, this is, uh, I kind of had it as that green and I kind of wanted to add camo to it somehow, but I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of camo, but I, I, th I think I can make it look okay. But anyway, um, I'm going to add that a little bit later. I could probably do it in the texture of the model, but that's, that's too much work. I'm probably just going to include it here in some, some parts here and there and hopefully make something cool, but you know, some different skins and stuff like different variations of color and stuff like that could be really, really interesting. And even like uh, Pokemon themed ones, like, like specific color palettes um has, has been a uh, has been a really big thing in the in the later games um so maybe something i w might want to include right because you know when we're designing this even though i'm designing an older game where uh the 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 concepts or the the idea is older or the, the the thing is older right we're still designing this with with the new audience in mind right with the things that they know the things that they're using because <clears throat> whenever um whenever you're like let's say this was an actual client where they're like hey uh, we want you to redesign this Pokemon Snap game. Like, great, cool, sure. And then I design something. And they're like, oh, we don't really do that anymore. Or, or you include an idea that they had from previous versions. Dude, they lose it. They're like, oh yeah, you know, because like, because they feel like you understand their their IP. They feel like you understand their uh, their projects. And so when you design with them in mind or with with what they already did, um, that's like the the easiest ticket to be like you know, this is, this is what we do. This is how we do it. Or this is, um, this is like a, a really good way to show that you care. You know what I mean? So. Cool. You bring some of that contrast down. Sick. Is that top bat? It says, thanks for doing this demo. <clears throat> My experience with painting over a model has been uh, put into the model and texture as much as possible and end up taking forever to complete. Yeah, I think I think that's a big thing. I was actually talking to a friend about this uh, the other day. We're like, when do you stop? You know what I mean? Like, Because there's this weird line that happens where uh, when you are... When you're painting, when you're when you're a painter, right? Just you're you're used to doing two D process, and then you start including three D. It's like, well, when do you stop doing three D, right? Because, you know, it could you could do like a block, a cube with like four donuts in the round, right? That's a car, right? And then basically just overhaul it through painting, right? Or you can get it to my level where there's like some materials, but it's not really much texture involved, and things are kind of working, but you know, I, I do have to resolve some of them in paint, or you can be like, "This is a this is a hundred percent working, Unreal ready model, right?" And it's like, you know, because some a lot of times that's overkill. That's like, yeah, you're just a modeler at that point, right? Not I don't want to say just a modeler, but you know what I mean. Like, you probably could have like stopped five or six hours ago instead. Of, you know what I mean? Like, you didn't have to kind of keep going. And I think that's where uh, it's it's a funny line that you kind of have to find for yourself. Some people, like I have students that they go so far to where it's literally just add atmosphere and you're done. Atmosphere and some overlay textures, which is great, right? That's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, I'm not bagging on it or anything, but it's you know that's a process, right? Some people don't like that though. Some people actually like to paint it more, right? And you know, where do you stop for yourself? And I think for me, that really does come down to like understanding where that line is for yourself, 
right? I think, I know for me, this is about as far as I'll ever take something because I do like painting. I do like the process of painting. And I do find that it's, it takes longer for me to get this painting into a, um, into a good illustration phase, right? Like, because it, if, for even right now, it still feels very 3D and it's not integrating with the environment very well. And so you kind of hit this zone of like, well, you know, if I, if I kind of model a little, little bit less and paint it a little bit more, I wouldn't be having this problem, right? So I'm having to like kind of fake down the illustration so it fits nicer, you know, or so on and so forth, right? It's, it's a whole process to try to make this fit. Um, and that can be a really big issue if, if you don't know how to do that. Um, and, you know, I mean, that's uh, no real crit there, but it, it really is just, you know, trying to find that for yourself, trying to figure out like where where your line is, right? I know where mine is. I know I generally know how far I want to take things, but, you know, some people don't do that. Some people don't want to take it that far. People, or some people want to take it further and they just, they need that, uh, that, uh, you know, all the way to like every last bolt needs to be accounted for kind of idea, you know, so. Got to add that rust in there, baby. Let's go. So all I'm doing is just <clears throat> grabbing different uh, different layers or, you know, duplicating the whole thing and then just masking it back in, colorizing it, right? It's just a brown car at this point and then colorizing it back in with some sort of texture brush and make it feel and follow the forms, right? Make it feel like it's scratched or something hit it or, you know, it, it made contact with something. Uh, it's an off-road car, right? You know, there's certain areas. You have to work through that logic. This is still design. You're still kind of working through those same thoughts that you've had. It's just now it's, you know, scratches and various things like that. So. Cool. But for now, I mean, I think we're at a pretty good spot. Um, I'll, I'm will i going to continue this. Uh, I'm probably going to hopefully get this whole uh, whole car kind of painted down a little bit. I'll show you what I do uh, next week. And then hopefully, or maybe I'll, I'll take the environment up. Uh, I haven't decided yet. We'll, we'll see where the wind takes me, right? Uh, but the idea would be, you know, getting this painting to kind of sit together a little bit nicer. Hopefully there's not that weird CG slash 2d effect kind of happening uh by the end of next week you know uh, no promises but you know you're gonna see where I, how far i would take this or how 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 much I'll, I'll kind of illustrate it down just to just to kind of show you that that i guess that level quality right um but for now <clears throat> you know we're at uh we're at our second to last uh stream for the year right we got one more next week uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up. We'll kind of do a, uh, just a quick presentation on like this painting plus some of the turnarounds plus the, uh, plus the call outs and stuff for the other painting that I did. Right. And, uh, hopefully, you know, it's, uh, it looks okay. Uh, we, we might take this further. We'll kind of see how that goes. Um, my priority next, next year will be the, uh, the monthly kind of streams where we have monthly topics each time. Uh, I would love for you to join. If you would like to participate, you know, just be ready for that. Um, you know, put that on your radar, mark it down. Um, I, I believe I said it's, uh, we're going to start on the 9th, if I, if I remember that correctly. <clears throat> Where's it at? Where's my calendar? Yeah, so um, January 9th is kind of where we're going to start that new format, right? So whether I, I continue this project or not, I'm not quite sure yet. We'll figure that out when we get there. We'll see if anybody like really wants me to continue this, uh, just let me know. Um, but you know, I can also kind of apply the same level of thinking and push it into new, uh, new illustrations and more, you know, beginner friendly slash, you know, uh, easier to kind of jump in projects is really what I want to do. Um, so with that in mind, guys, um, you know, for now, this is kind of where we're at. Hopefully, you know, hopefully you can kind of see where the, the level of modeling really isn't that high. You know, there's there is some more advanced things that I kind of did to make this look better, but it is the same things. I never used any other tricks 
Uh, I just kept doing the same things and I just applied a color slash material to it. Uh, most of this is design thinking, right? The modeling, yes, it helped it look better, uh, but I would have came to those same, same conclusions regardless of using a model or not, right? Um, you know, that the thought process of pulling from my hobbies or my interests really made this vehicle what it is. Whether it's good or bad, you know, you, you decide on what that is. Uh, but at the end of the day, it was informed from references, right? We designed this based off of a thing that exists in our life that people can actually relate to. It's not just some random shape to be a random shape. It looks this way for a reason. It's a combination of a couple different ideas that we talked about from last week, right? So that in mind, guys, uh, thanks for watching. You know, I really, uh, really appreciate everybody, uh, you know, participating, uh, especially the ones that are participating. And I appreciate everyone uh, watching and, you know, just having having a chat so uh with that in mind guys uh thanks uh, thanks for hanging out and i'll see you next week